three point shot. <laughs> 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 The following is a production of the Rough Rider Broadcast Team, a presentation of Watlington and Shires Productions. Net SN and Azalea Orthopedics brings you Northeast Texas Sports, the 2024 season. You know how when you go on a trip, you want your car to be as clean as it can be, inside and out. That's because you're getting ready to take a journey. Well, that's what we're doing here with the pregame show, getting you ready for the Rough Rider Baseball. That's why Will Blackshear and all his staff at B3 Car Wash invite you to come by and get the car clean and invite you to enjoy the pregame show. For Matthews Realty, going above and beyond is what's expected. This is agency owner Colin Matthews. Our team of seasoned real estate professionals believe in giving their clients an advantage in any real estate transaction. Matthews Realty has a reputation of highly personalized service. Matter of fact, it's our number one priority. From commercial and residential properties, poultry farms to beach rentals, our team works hard so you don't have to. Call Matthews Realty 598-7800 or see their complete listings at MatthewsRealty.com. Alrighty, folks, welcome here to uh, the big broadcast. It is uh, NetSN. I am uh, your host, Larry Pierce, along with uh, my good friend here, uh, Jason Locke, ready to go for some center baseball here this afternoon. I know uh, you don't want to sit here and look at me, so let's uh, turn this camera on, and then we'll get to the main camera right there. That's what we want to see right there. All right, so uh, welcome to the broadcast. Man. It says here that we need to talk about the Hope Medical Injury Report, so you know a little bit more about it, uh, Mr. Locke. So uh, what do you think is going on here in uh, – I don't know what's going on with the injury report, and how about uh, this weather? What do you think is happening? Well, we appreciate Hope Medical Center bringing us this. As far as we know, everybody is healthy and ready to go tonight. The riders down to uh, – they've got uh, the game tonight and then two more next week, but I think everybody's ready to play on the roster. Weather's, weather's overcast today. Of course, it had some misty rain here in center, but I was down on the field earlier. The field is, is actually dry, uh, believe it or not, and – so no issues there. Uh, you know, Gilmer, Tuesday night, it was raining off and on through the whole game. We had a lot of errors, a lot of miss, uh, hit batsmen, balls thrown on away. YouTube. But uh, not going to have any of that tonight. The weather's great. Got a little bit of a breeze blowing. It is overcast, so we'll have the lights on here pretty soon. But a great night for baseball here at the Horseshoe. If you're in town and you can make it out, we'd love to have you. The riders have this home game and then one more home game next week and that'll wrap up the district season for the Rough Riders. All right, so let's take a quick break here and then to see if we can uh, get things rolling as it is uh, your injury report. Everybody looks good here brought to us by Hope Medical. At Hope Community Medicine, they believe that more than medicine is needed when providing quality care for their patients. With locations throughout East Texas, the vision is to give hope to those who seek a better life by caring for their body, mind, and soul, and not about their ability to pay. Through the network of staff and locations, Hope seeks to be primary provider of medical, dental, and behavioral health. Because the difference that Hope makes is the difference between night and day. Hope Community Health. Batters Law Firm is your first choice in personal injury law. Jeff Batters and his staff lead the way in the area with best of Nacogdoches and best of Lufkin votes over the last several years. If your case matters, it's got to be Batters. You know how when you go on a trip, you want your car to be as clean as it can be inside and out. That's because you're getting ready to take a journey. Well, that's what we're doing here with the pregame show, getting you ready for the Rough Rider Baseball. That's why Will Blackshear and all his staff at B3 Car Wash invite you to come by and get the car clean and invite you to enjoy the pregame show.
Farmer State Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender, and so much more. All right, uh, getting that in there a little bit. As uh, it says here to talk to a fan or about the fans, we were talking to a Gilmer fan as they were uh, needing some internet help out. So hopefully we got those guys helped out right there. Uh, but, uh, you know, hey, this is, uh, you know, uh, I finally get to do a, a, a hometown team. We got to do it once over in Shelbyville after some rain out and stuff the other day. Uh, that was a good game. But, you know, you know, tell me a little bit more about this team, uh, Mr. Locke. I mean, you know, they're a good team. And it just seems like, you know, they, 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 they've hung out here together. They have been in every game. You know, they've, they've played really, really hard. You know, and it's a young team, and it may be that, that building year. I know we talked a little about that too. But, I mean, uh, that's kind of where this team is here. And then this team now, uh, you know, hey, this game right here is for last place. You hate to say that, but, I mean, you don't want to be in last place. So stay out of that rock bottom here. That's what this – if they can accomplish that, I think it would be good for them. Yeah, our, our understanding is both teams are mathematically eliminated. So this is really for pride. Um, but uh, both teams are obviously coming in to win tonight. The Rough Riders, as you mentioned, we're a young team. We're starting, you know, our one, two, three hole hitters in the lineup are all freshmen. Uh, got a couple of sophomores starting, one or two juniors, and one senior that actually starts on the team. So very young. It's been a long season, but the Riders have played well. You know, we're not – we're losing games seven to six or, or three to four. So mm -hmm. a lot of moments of, of, uh, of some real – Things to look forward to. Some talent is on the field. Getting a lot of experience on some of these young guys this year. You, you hate that they got kind of thrown into the fire uh, as freshmen and sophomores, but that'll pay its dues in seasons to come. Yeah, because I mean, you know, if there's any of these kids that have probably been baseball players since the, you know their whole lives, and they've watched their favorite teams, you know, and they, they see the major leaguers go through that kind of thing. You know, your team is good for a year or two, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're trying to build up a little bit. And, uh, you know, and next thing you know, you're trying to, you know, you lose a bat here, you have an injury here, there, you, you get in some young players, you just have to build it back up. So, you know, as long as the riders are doing that and the fans are behind them too, you always have a good crowd out here. They follow them as well. And so, you know, I, I think it's good for these riders out here and, and how the things are coming along. You know, sometimes you just got to take it and build it. Yeah, and you're, and you're going to see some of that tonight. We've got Easton Wolf is going to be on the mound for the Rough Riders. He's a freshman. He plays uh, third base for the riders or he pitches. The last time he pitched here at home was against Henderson, and he threw six and two-thirds shutout innings. Mm -hmm. uh, outstanding. He did that again last week uh, against uh, – uh, I'm sorry, I can't um, – yes, Henderson again. Uh -huh. He pitched another shutout for, for six, and, six or so innings. So a lot coming out of those freshmen. Very proud of them. Uh, it's going to be a good ball game tonight. This this two teams play Tuesday night. It was nine to nine going into the seventh inning, and Gilmer won on a walk off, ten oh, to wow. nine in yeah. the seventh. So, two good teams. They're pretty evenly matched. Should be a great ball game tonight. Yeah, it's going to be good. We're getting ready to get it started here. Let's uh, hear from some of these great sponsors. We'll get back to it and get our keys to the game coming up. Gaddy's Medical Supply. It's your one stop shop for the supplies and the equipment that you need as you go along your recovery. Their compassionate and knowledgeable staff is there to help you as you get better. Gaddy's Medical Supply. GBA Financial Services brings you Coach Talk, and there's a reason for that. John Black knows that when you're preparing for an important game, you need a plan. And they'd like to be a part of the details, the X's and O's of that plan. He's put together a good team, a coaching staff that would help you and your family get where they want to go. At JBA Financial Services, they're working to secure your family's future. Yeah, we do that, and I can go, I can do lineups or something. I don't okay. know what all they're gonna. I don't see any little leaguers, so I don't right. think that's happening. Yeah, we, we were wondering if there's some little leaguers going on here tonight, but uh, some uh, keys to the game here this evening. As uh, we said a little bit here is, you know, to uh, just play good baseball. You seem to think that it's going to be a small ball game here tonight. Yeah, we saw a lot of bunting, saw a lot of stealing, uh, you know, some of that going on Tuesday night. Of course, Tuesday night, the weather, it was wet and kind of misty rainy, so there were a lot of errors on both teams. Uh -huh. Just hard to hold on to the baseball. Um, not going to have that problem tonight as far as it being damp or wet, but we did see, uh, I, I can tell you, Gilmer batted up and down the order. They're three and four and five hole hitters were bunting really? uh, at the plate. So I'm expecting a lot of small ball, a lot of base runners, and uh, a lot of steal attempts. So it ought to be a good competitive game, an exciting game. Well, you know, with that being said, you know, and noticing that uh, the other night, uh, do you think Coach Moore has maybe 
thought about that a little bit here tonight about uh, you know what to do and how to play some little defense if certain hitters are up or something. Yeah, I think we, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not sure what he worked on in practice this week, but I can assume after Tuesday night, you know, they probably worked on their rotations a little bit, their bunt management. Uh, some of the coverages were a little late getting to bags. So, yeah, I, I definitely think they should have worked on that. All righty, well, we're ready to wrap up the uh, car, the B3 car wash pregame. So we're going to do that and get you ready for the uh, starting lineups. And uh, Mr. Lock will have those for you when we come back here as we get ready for this one here. Brought to us by the Skillmore Series, brought to us by the good folks at Farmer State Bank. Farmer State Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender, and so much more. All righty, folks, back here is uh, the uh, being announced. and got some uh, youngsters out here going to be announced, too. So uh, yeah. the Skilmer squad, as you said, you know, uh, going around the horn for them, they got a pretty good little team out here. And I don't know, you were saying, uh, you know, that they may be young as well here. Maybe that's, you know, these two teams could be fighting for first and second next year. You never know. Yeah, the, uh, the Gilmer squad last year had an outstanding young pitcher. He is pitching in college this year. I talked to uh, one of their guys earlier. He was he was memorable and uh, did a great job. They're a little young this year as well, uh, similar to what we have. So it's a special night tonight. You hear the announcer in the background. We have some of the center little league is going to come out with the center rough riders. Always love seeing some of those young guys come out with their uh, high school heroes. And uh, the baseball team actually went to the elementary school this morning and they were there on the sidewalk as the kids came into the school. They were opening the doors and helping the kids get out of the cars. And it was just a, a neat thing that the uh, Rough Riders did this morning. And they had their jerseys on and took pictures with all the young guys. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and uh, some of these youngsters out here at T-ball and, uh, uh, and, you know, into the younger leagues. Yeah, this is uh, really cool to get you out here on this big field that the little guys don't you normally get to get the chance to get out here on. Do they? Yeah, and they'll uh, they'll line up with our starting lineup, and they'll stay out through the uh, through the national anthem, and then uh, when we start warming up, they'll they'll make their way off the field. But what a great moment for uh, for these little leaguers to come out. Yeah, definitely, definitely, that's true. Yeah, I, I remember you know uh, just you know, playing baseball as a little guy, and then you know come out and get to. We didn't live too far from the high school. Got to go check out some games there. Just kind of peeked over the outfield fence, watching those guys play ball. So, anytime you can get out there as a as a baseball player, get out onto a, a big field like this, it's pretty special. Well, we are just about done with the uh, starting lineups here. We will take a break for the national anthem, and we'll be back. And thanks to Farmers Bank for being our game sponsor tonight. We'll hear more about farmers when we come back right after the national anthem. Serving our communities for over a century, Farmers State Bank continues to meet the financial needs of East and Central Texas with roots that run deep. Farmers State Bank serves as a source of financial strength to meet the needs of our neighbors. From a comprehensive range of financial products to individual service, we remain dedicated to being a true community bank. Farmers State Bank, improving lives and fulfilling dreams. There's never been a better time to give yourself a great night's sleep than now with Blake Furniture's mattress clearance sale. For a limited time, choose any of our luxurious Serenity Sleep Complete sets and pay only the price of a mattress. You heard right, buy a Serenity Sleep mattress and get the box spring absolutely free. Combine our already low prices with this offer and you won't find a better deal in East Texas on a quality set of bedding. With Blake Furniture's fast delivery and easy in-store financing, you can't afford to miss another great night's rest with Serenity Sleep bedding. Struggling with mobility, chronic pain, work, or sports injury? At Azalea Orthopedics, our team of highly trained physicians specialize in complete orthopedic care, pain management, sports medicine, physical medicine, and rehabilitation. 
If you've sustained a bone or joint injury, have mobility or movement problems, struggle with pain, contact Azalea Orthopedics. We're conveniently located across East Texas, serving 18 counties. When visiting your doctor, urgent care, or hospital, you have a choice. Demand Azalea. At Azalea Orthopedics, your health is our priority. And we're back. Ready to go here for the start of this one. The Gilmer Series brought to you by the good folks at Farmer State Bank, bringing us the ball game here tonight. Starting lineup, ready to go with that. All right, starting lineup for your Rough Riders. Number four, Sutton Link is going to lead things off. Sutton is going to be playing left field tonight. Then followed by Easton Wolf. Easton is the starting pitcher for the Rough Riders. Pitched a couple of, uh, like, two games this in this past couple of series were six or more innings of shutout ball. Going to have a good night for Easton. In the third hole, Cody Atkinson. Cody playing center field. Cleaning things up will be Logan Horton. Logan over at third base. T.J. Bellin comes in at shortstop. Jaden Lane, another one of those fantastic freshmen playing first base tonight. Case Milford holding down second base. Then Colby Lout behind the dish. And Gage Vadreen coming in and DHing for the Rough Riders tonight. He is DHing for Caleb Mosley. Caleb's getting the start in right field. So that's your starting lineup tonight. Looking forward to the Gilmer game. First pitch here in just a second. Gilmer uh, comes in. They're going to pitch Aiden Davis on the mound tonight. We got to see Davis for uh, – he came in and pitched the sixth and seventh inning on Tuesday night. Didn't have to throw in the seventh. Uh, only just a couple of pitches. So he's, he's able to come back and pitch again tonight. So here comes first pitch. Braden Pate is going to start things off. Braden is the shortstop for the Gilmer Buckeyes. Easton Wolf on the mound for the Riders. And that uh, big senior catcher there. Only senior for, uh, uh, for, the, for the Rough Riders. Loud, isn't it? Only one in the starting lineup. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's going to be a ball low from Wolf. And we are underway here at the Horseshoe. A very light, light breeze blowing out to center field. Shouldn't really affect anything tonight. That pitch is in for a strike. Evens account at one and one. <coughs> and the big curveball is going to be lifted into right center. Cody Atkins is there, makes the play. Boy, Cody had a good range on that ball. He came way over into right field, next, tracked it down, and put three, it away. All right, this brings up Klein Lindsey. Klein Lindsey was the starting pitcher for the Buckeyes Tuesday night. He only went about four innings. Buckeyes used three different arms in the Tuesday night ball game. And that's a strike on the inside corner. Good pitch from Wolf. He's got the fastball working. I think this cool day helped him uh, stay uh, stay with that heater, bringing it in. And a nice. late, late swing. He really fooled the batter there. Yeah, he uh, not near as hot as it was last week against Henderson. Maybe that will keep him fresh for the night. This is a soft one hit out to Case Milford at second, and Milford makes the play. So the Riders. Two up, two down here in the top of the first. That's going to bring up Grayson Bates. Bates is the third baseman for the Buckeyes. Also came in in relief pitching on Tuesday night. He was the middle relief. Wolf works very quickly from the mound. Big curveball, and that's going to stay just outside. That had a break on it, didn't it? You can really see it from up here. Against Henderson two weeks ago, he dominated with that curveball. Comes back with a fastball low and misses. Mm. That looked like a good pitch. And the big curveball is going to be fouled off the fingers. Well, the young man did not run. It was hit fair. Even though mm. it comes off his fingers, folks, that is not a foul ball. That is a fair ball. 
your hands are considered part of the bat. So young Mr. Bates grounded to second and was thrown out, even though he thought he was going to get a foul ball called. So the Riders face three. They set three down. We'll be right back for the bottom of the first. Granny B Snow Cone Center is your source for great summer treats. It begins with quality shaved ice. And from there, you get everything from the single color snow cone to a really creative summer treat. And besides, the counselor likes it. They're also your home for Dippin' Dots. They've been supporting the Rough Riders for a mighty long time. So pull up to the window at Granny B's and let them serve you something special. Bird Forestry began with Mike Bird, East Texas's lush forests, and a dream for the future. At Bird Forestry, that future is now. As it moves into its second generation, Bird Forestry is a diverse enterprise protecting the environment while it works with industries to ensure the growth of Texas businesses and the welfare of its people. The Bird family supports the riders on the course and beyond. All right, folks, welcome back. Appreciate Farmer State Bank being our game sponsor. Farmers with multiple locations here in Center Texas to meet your needs, as well as throughout the East Texas area. Farmers always supports the youth in the area, and we appreciate them very much bringing the Gilmer Series to you. Just kind of recap, Tuesday night, the Riders played neck and neck with the Gilmer Buckeyes got all the way to the top of the seventh inning tied nine to nine the Riders had two men on unable to score in the top of the seventh we went into the bottom of the seventh tied up Gilmer was able to get a couple of men on base and scored on an error with a uh, so we we ended up losing ten to nine in the bottom of the seventh on an error tough way oh. to end the night it was rainy and nasty the ball took a terrible hop on the infield, and the fielder just wasn't able to make the play. So, ought to be a good ball game tonight between these two teams. They're pretty even. Well, you know, in a couple of weeks back, we, you and I did a game over in Shelbyville, and, uh, I mean, they played a good game over there. Just some errors got to, got the riders there yeah. about the third or fourth inning, and then that just kind of turned it around for them there too. So, those uh, error games, those, those will get you every time. Yeah, young teams, you're going to see those kind of things. Hopefully, they can overcome some of that tonight. So Sutton Link is going to start things off for the Riders, and he foul tips strike one. This is Aiden Davis, right-hander on the mound for the Buckeyes. And Link swings through again, down in the count 0-2 here. Leadoff man would be big here, just a big starting inning, and see if the Riders just jump on him quick. And Link oh, hits a nice. rope right at Grayson Bates over at third base. Bates didn't have to move. That ball came right to him the for the one. first He's out. The Tough shot for uh, Sutton. He hit that well. Yeah, the Riders were able to get their leadoff man on base, believe it or not, in the first three innings Tuesday night. And you're talking about playing the hot, hot corner there. That's playing the hot corner. you got to have your head on us with a bit of ready over there. Yeah, Bates, boy, he didn't have he didn't have to move. That ball came right at him. So Easton Wolf steps in with one away here in the bottom of the first. No score in the ball game. And Davis is going to step off. That's something we did see Tuesday night. The Gilmer pitchers take a lot of time in between pitches. And this is going to be skied. The second baseman, Ryder Lang, calls for it, and he makes the play. So both teams had a lot of gamesmanship Tuesday night. We saw a lot of the pitchers stop, and they would step off and kind of get reset and taking a lot of time in between pitches, trying to disrupt the batter's timing. The batters were taking time, trying to disrupt the pitcher's timing. Especially with all the waiting and everything, they're just trying to get everybody off of it. Too. Yeah, and, and with all the runs being scored, it was a three-hour ball game. Oof. So Cody Atkinson steps in. He foul tips the first pitch he sees. Well, it was a three-hour game tonight. At least we don't have a hard ride home this time. That's right. <laughs> I live across the road here. <laughs> and Cody Ooh, hits shot. a line oh, shot. That is a ball. base that is a base hit, folks. It skips over third base. Cody digs for second. There will be a throw. He is in. Nice job. Slides in safely to second base. Good job of base running by Cody Atkinson. 
the ball hit third base and went straight up in the air. Cody saw it, and he never checked up. The coach at first base sent him straight to second, and Cody's in safe with a double. Nice, yeah. I mean, it hit that bag hard, and, I mean, it had ice on it when it came down. All right, so Logan Horton, the cleanup batter, is going to step in. There are two outs with Atkinson at second. Coach Moore going to give a couple of signals here, and we'll see what Horton has in store. Gilmer worked a lot of base runners. They did pick off a couple of Rough Riders Tuesday night, so we can mm. expect more of that. And here we go. The catcher is going to go out and talk to the pitcher. They picked off two of the Rough Rider runners at second base Tuesday night. Oh, wow. That's something you don't normally see. One maybe every now and then, but two of them in one game. That's a yeah, they had they had some plays on and were able to get us in a couple of rundowns, and they tagged out a runner at second. So the rider's going to have to be careful tonight. And that ball skips in, but a good job by Dylan Griffin blocked that. There is a ton of foul territory here at the horseshoe. If you miss it, a pass ball is going to roll about 40 feet before it hits the fence. I guess that could be beneficial here in the shallow foul ground, you know, to catch something by the dugouts there, maybe. Yeah, a lot of foul territory. If you uh, if you pop one high, it's going to get caught on this field. So we got two balls, no strikes to Horton with two outs. Atkinson on second. And this oh, is a, a rope shot. hit at shortstop. Oh. He's going to catch it in the air. Nice catch. So two of the outs in the inning for the Riders hit right into the gloves of the fielders. So we'll head back to the top of the second when we come back to the horseshoe right after this. Struggling with mobility, chronic pain, work, or sports injury? At Azalea Orthopedics, our team of highly trained physicians specialize in complete orthopedic care, pain management, sports medicine, physical medicine, and rehabilitation. If you've sustained a bone or joint injury, have mobility or movement problems, struggle with pain, contact Azalea Orthopedics. We're conveniently located across East Texas, serving 18 counties. When visiting your doctor, urgent care, or hospital, you have a choice. Demand Azalea. At Azalea Orthopedics, your health is our priority. So many things get started at Pizzeria. You start your party off with a pizza from the Pizzeria. You get your celebration started. You get your season started. For a lot of us, our passion with pizza started at the Pizzeria, a tradition since 1960s. It's the Pizzeria just off the square in center. All right, as we're back here, I want to take one second as I uh, went to the uh, concession stand here before we got hooked up, and we have the Cultural Exchange uh, right. group in there, and uh, these very nice young ladies in there and very nice teachers too, uh, but uh, they're telling me about some of the cool trips they got to take, like to Italy, and they're going to London and Paris next year, so pretty neat for those uh, center high school students. Absolutely. Give those students a chance to travel and see a little bit of the world. Glad to hear the cultural exchange group here and working tonight. So Ryder Lang, the second baseman, is starting things off. And Easton Wolf throws a fastball past him for strike one. Comes back with the changeup and is going to miss inside one and one. And that pitch is misses inside as well, 2-1. My wife and I actually went as chaperones with the Cultural Exchange Program a number of years ago. We went to mm -hmm. Spain and Italy with the high school group. Nice. This is going to be lifted into center field right at Cody Atkinson, and he makes the play for the first out here in the top of the second. But we had a great time, and all those students were able to experience different cultures and a little bit of international travel and food. We had a, a terrific time, went to the Vatican, went all over Rome and Italy, went through uh, Barcelona. Man, it was great. So glad those kids getting to do that. And that's a nice trip. I'm going to have to take one of these days. Oh, oh, watch out now, playing a little. Don't know how that missed. This is Harrison <laughs> Lofton, the DH, and 
It just I thought it miss. hit him, but it it went right over the belt buckle for ball one. I'm afraid I'd have rubbed something and claimed I got hit on that. <laughs> exactly. Big curveball comes back, and no, whoa, goodness, that looked good. Umpire what shakes his head no. 2-0 count to the batter. Comes back oh. inside and gets a swing and a miss there, 2-1. Well, Wolf is definitely hitting his spots with his fastball. He's not throwing it over the middle of the plate yet. He's inside, outside every pitch. That one's mm. going to be a little too far inside and does hit him on the back of the elbow. And that uh, one hurts, Susan folks. Going to give him a chance Justin to Jones. shake that off, rub a little dirt on it. Try it on down first. Yep, that got him right on the top of the elbow. Tell you, speaking of that, because, you know, uh, we were doing a game down in West of Bean as a softball game, and one of them got loose and hit that umpire right there on that end. I mean, it swelled up, looked like a golf ball in there. They had to send her to the hospital. So that's a little knot there that you can get getting on that elbow. you got to be careful. All right. Well, Lofton takes his base. That brings up Justin Jones with one out. Wolf comes Boy, right back with the nice. curveball. No fear there. Throws it for the strike. Do you feel he works a little bit better from the stretch, or is he a, a better out for the windup? You know, he, he works pretty well both. I think he's probably a little more comfortable in the stretch, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he looks like he throws that breaking ball real good from the stretch. So I was just kind of how he was wondering about that. And oh. they squared a bunt. It's bunted in the oh. air and a diving <laughs> Colby Lout just out of the reach of the catcher's mitt. A good effort by the senior. So we will call that strike two, and we'll line up and do it again. Horton was on his horse from third, too. He thought maybe he can get there. It's popped up there high enough. Thought maybe he might have a chance. And just Well, I warned you about the bunting. We're going <laughs> to see a bunch of it tonight. Jones not able to get that one down. Now he's got two strikes, so he will be swinging. Look for a double play ball right <coughs> here. T.J. Bellin be ready at short. And the curveball is fouled away. Beautiful pitch. Boy, yeah. Wolf has really got the break on the curveball going tonight. Yeah, he does. So looking for Shires of Wallington. Uh, you want to check out the other stream, having them both going there over there for the Lady Riders and uh, doing a game in Gilmer tonight. Softball, their first one of the year. That's right. Lady Riders won Tuesday night. That put them into the playoffs. Be right three. So they are playing a very good strike now three. Back that back is a twice the high strikeout. For Easton Wolf, his first of the night. Yeah, so they are in the playoffs, and uh, so they're going to get there, and that's the first time in a few years, huh? That's right. Lady Riders won Tuesday night, put them in the playoffs. They went to Gilmer tonight playing against a very good, I think maybe undefeated, Gilmer Lady Buckeyes. Oof. And Oof. this is hit that's hard oh. into center field. That's going to be a base hit. For Moreno, and Jones is going to round out and go all the way to third. So the Buckeyes, with two outs, have men on Up the next, corners. The catcher number four, Dylan Griffin. Good piece of hitting there by Moreno. He lifted that ball just over the second baseman, kind of in a little bit more center field, second base area for a base hit. It's going to bring up Dylan Griffin. He is the eight-hole hitter. He's got two outs and men on the corners. Gilman trying to put together a little two-out rally here in the top of the second. And, and that fastball is fouled back for strike one. Wolf trying to pitch out of this thing here. Well, Wolf went right at him with a high fastball there. Colby Lout steps out, gives a defensive play. Hold him over at first, but play off over at third a little bit over there. And the curveball, right. another strike. Nice. Wolf has got it breaking tonight, folks. Down in the count 0-2 here. Wolf's got a couple of pitches he can waste. See if he can get Griffin to chase something. Nope, comes right at him with the fastball, and it is smothered by Jaden Lane. What a play by the freshman at first base. 
and he eliminates the threat. And the Riders able to get out of the inning. There's lots of zeros on the board. We'll be right back here to the horseshoe for the bottom of the second. Will Blackshirt knows a thing or two about baseball and softball. He's an old Rough Rider baseball player himself, so he understands that numbers are important. How about this for numbers? A 16-pound bag of ice for $1.75 or a 20-pound bag dumped right into your cooler. 25 cents gets you a gallon of filtered water. 75 cents, five gallons. How about that? Twice the ice. Back here ready to go for the uh, bottom half of the second inning. And uh, in there pitching is Davis. He had one inning of work. He threw nine pitches, no strikeouts, no base on balls. He gave up the one hit. So he's back out there for the second inning here, man. All right. And the Rough Riders are going to send T.J. Bellin, Jaden Lane, and Case Milford to the plate this inning. Try to get something going. We have a 0-0 ball game here at the Horseshoe. Special shout out, a couple of our sponsors tonight. Thank you, Mooney's Emporium. Mother's Day is around the corner, folks. If you want a customized gift for mom, Mooney's Emporium does a lot of engraving. They do a lot of the, uh, the special prints on blankets and things like that. So go see Mooney's Emporium on the downtown center square and they will fix you up for Mother's Day. And, guys, don't be afraid to go down there and shop because I found some good stuff in there. One thing I like in there, they have this black pepper jalapeno mustard. They have some fantastic is, food oh items. Oh, my That's gosh. Right. Chili cheese dogs with that on there is just perfect. Barbecue sauces, oh, spices, yeah. Chili dry stuff, rubs, all kinds of stuff. everything. Yeah. Here we go. Bellin, starting off. And a curveball from Davis misses inside to Bellin. And comes in high, 2-0. TJ, one of the juniors on this team, all-around athlete, plays multiple sports here at Center High School. Yeah, can't wait to see him back on the basketball court again next year, too. And that pitch misses low. It's 3-0 to Bellin. He's taken all the way here. Bellin, a standout football star, basketball, baseball. I think he runs a little track. Probably could play tennis and golf if you put him out there. <laughs> and there's a strike, 3-1. And Bellin fouls this back, and we're at a full count. Nice job by Davis, actually, really, to uh, be behind him 3-0 and then get him to a full count here. He came right back with two straight fastballs to get back in this thing. Let's see what Bellin can do here. And that mm. one inside, they saw him off. He hits a slow roller to first, and the first baseman, Klein, Lindsey, able to take it himself for the out. Almost, almost had a collision there. Yeah. Aiden Davis covered from the pitcher's mound as he's supposed to, but Lindsey decided to keep it, and Davis and Lindsey kind of ran into each other at first base. Yeah, Lindsey had to uh, pull up a little bit there. He's going to take out his pitcher. So Jaden Lane steps in, freshman first baseman for the Rough Riders. He is one of our only left-handed batters, and mm. he takes a strike on the outside corner. Mm, hope they that get the call a, on that on both sides. A little bit on the far outside <laughs> corner, in my opinion. And that pitch is going to be low, so the count one and one. Lane made a fine defensive play in the last inning over at first base. But his pitcher knew to stay out of his way. <laughs> Davis almost got to, took out on a similar play. Takes another fastball out there on the outside corner. He's down in the count now, one and two. Going to have to swing at a couple of those fastballs. And they come back outside with a changeup and miss, 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. 
starting to get a little bit of a breeze blowing in here tonight. And this is hit softly, but well, just perfectly placed right in between the second baseman and second base. Second baseman not able to get baseman, there. Three, and Jaden Lane with a base hit. Second base hit of the day here for the Riders. <laughs> that was a curveball. Lane just really didn't put a full swing on it, just kind of slapped at it and was able to slap it in to the gap between second and short. So Case Milford comes to the plate. One out here with Lane at first base. Kind of a, a different kind of a walk-up song, Delta Dawn. <laughs> Got a little bit of throwback there. I love the tune, but uh, how about that? It is a walk-up song. Anyway, maybe Milford likes the tune. First pitch low to Milford. Milford made a couple of great plays Tuesday night. See if a little of that magic rubs off tonight. They are going to check on Lane at first. He is back safe. How are we stolen bases this year? I mean, I know we had to have a few opportunities out there, so it's got to be something Coach got to work on because you need that for the future too. Yeah, still, still something that's kind of a work in progress. We did get picked off on a base Tuesday nights, or, or thrown out on a base Tuesday night rather. This is popped high into left field. The left fielder, Moreno, does make the play, so Milford flies out to left. That's going to send Lane back to first base. So Colby, Colby Lout has a little walk-up music to the late great Toby. Toby Keith there. So he's going to come to the plate with two outs and a man on first. And he hits a nice line field shot field. into left field. That's a base hit for Colby <laughs> Lout. It gets past the left fielder. They're going to get extra bases. They are sending Same Lane way. home. Get in there, Colby. Get Colby, in there, Colby diving for third. Safe, safe. at third nice base. Job. Colby Lout with a triple and RBI. Boy, what a close play there. But he dove right in. And, boy, nice job by Coach Moore getting down. He's animated down there in the coach's box. Colby Lout with a little senior leadership came through when it counted, folks. Lane able to score all the way from first base. The left fielder came charging, but he didn't stop the ball, and it got under a glove and went all the way to the fence. And Lout was digging all the way, able to Superman slide into third base. So they're going to lift Lout for a pinch runner. He earned that. Let's see. So we've got one second. We'll tell you who the runner is. I think I can see his number. That's Jace Radney coming in to pinch run. Want to give him a shout out. So Radney is at third base. We've got two outs. And Gage Vadreen fouls off the first pitch he sees. So the Riders draw first blood here in the bottom of the second. Up one to nothing. Great job running, too, being uh, watching his coach coming around second and uh, taking that bag. That was a great job there by Colby Lout. The dream pops up in foul territory, oh. and the pitcher catcher look at each other, and folks, they dropped it in between them. You hate to see that, but both of them thought the other one had it, and they stopped and looked at each other, and the ball falls on the ground between them. The dream did really well, too. He didn't go out of the baseline. He went right down the baseline, and he didn't really interfere. But, he, I mean, at the same time, he was kind of coming there. The ball was coming down, so the dream not the really in, 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 interference at all. Yeah, the, the Gilmer coach is questioning that. He's asking for an interference call there. Not really. I mean, if he, he ran he right down the baseline, baseline. so he, he can't really call an interference right there. He's just doing what he's got to do. I agree with you, and that, I think that's what the umpire says. He was in the base path, therefore – Oh, nope. My out. goodness, they reversed that. And Coach Moore does he not like it He was running either. down the base path. He has the right to the base, guys. You cannot call him out if he's in the baseline. So they're going to call Vadreen out. Well, nothing we're Coach lose that argument. Moore can do. They have called Vadreen out on an er interference call. He was in the baseline. I do not understand this. Coach Moore is going to get his due, but he's going to lose that argument. Well, the good news is the Riders put one on the on the board. 
We'll be right back for the. Hey, Jack Allen. Hey, yes, sir. Tell me about TNR Station War. What do you look forward to? Oh, I look forward to the seafood buffet. On Fridays? On Fridays. Everything about it is just exquisite. So if it's a Friday night game, you need to eat at TNR Station War. At Aurora Concepts, our team of doctors and advanced practice providers are highly trained and qualified in family medicine. We strive to provide our patients guidance towards the healthiest lifestyle possible, no matter their age. We offer a full spectrum of family medicine, including scheduled appointments, telehealth services you can do from home, and walk-in visits with no appointment. We accept all major insurances, including Medicaid and Medicare, and we also have the most competitive self-pay rates in the area. For highly trained expert care in East Texas, choose Aurora Concepts. Let us take care of you. All right, folks, we're back here ready to go to the third inning, and coming back out is uh, Wolf. He'll be out there after his two innings of work. I got him for 25 pitches, one strikeout, no base on balls. He's given up the one hit and no runs so far as we go to the uh, third, one nothing Riders. So he's going to face the nine-hole hitter, Aiden Aiken, and then back to the top of the order with Braden Pate and Klein Lindsey. All right. A little bit of a letdown in that last inning. Kind of a controversial call for that third out. Mm. Riders need to shake that off and play a little defense here. That pitch inside for a ball. Like Wolf kind of slipped on that. Saw his foot kind of go out from under him at the end of that pitch. <coughs> Get in there and repack that mound. Good fastball. Can't believe that wasn't called a strike. He caught the corner. So it's now 2-0. And the big curveball, and that is a strike. Well, yeah. well did they, they appeal right. down? Oh, no, folks. They, <laughs> once again, the umpire says no. That was not a strike. I cannot believe it. They appealed that call down the line. And the field umpire said he did not go. So, wow, it is now 2-2. Two -two. Well, I don't know what the count is now. Umpire, I think it's full now. I think it's a full count now because he didn't allow he's the He's given other. three strike signals, but he only, yeah, he only allowed the two. He only allowed two. Yeah, he rung him There's up there. There's a twice the eye strike three for <laughs> For oh, Easton Wolf, great, wow! Great. I think Wolf threw five strikes I in that account. Right. In that You'll count, you're right, right there. I think you're right. Could you not know. keep up with that one. Anyway, the second strikeout for Wolf of the game, and we're back to the top of the order for Gilmer. This is Braden Pate. Big curveball into Pate, and that's going to miss. He's 0 for one. Fly out to center field to lead it off. Pate doing a little gardening there, filling in some holes. And a hard fastball is going to be ripped right up the middle for a base hit. So Pate now, on with a single three, with one away. It's going to bring up Klein Lindsey. So Gilmer got the heart of their order coming up here with one out. Well, yeah, and a hard smack on that one. It got through the field quick. Lindsey's 0 for 1. He grounded out to second his first time. Let's see if we can uh, second play. would be a nice double play opportunity here. Good lead at first. Wolf's going to check the runner. He's back safe. Now, two weeks ago against Henderson, Jade Lane pulled a hidden ball trick, and it worked. Yeah, I haven't uh, seen that in a long time. <laughs> Walton Lieutenant Shires will tell me about that. And there's a bunt. That one's going to roll foul from Lindsey. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever seen a uh, hidden ball trick actually during a game. Seen the videos of it, watched the replays, but never actually seen it happen. I, uh, I'm going to speculate that only the pitcher and first baseman knew that was coming. I do not <laughs> think, judging by Coach Moore's reaction, I don't think he was in on it. Mm. And the runner breaks for second. They do show bunt again. This one goes foul as well. So Lindsey 
Two straight bunt attempts, two straight foul balls, and he's down in the count 0-2. Pate will head back to first base. You're right. As soon as they put somebody on, that's uh, exactly what they're going to do. They're going to start trying to bunt them over. And the big curveball. Well, he's trying to get him to chase that one. Lindsey wanted it, but just able to check his swing, so it's now one and two with one away. Fastball comes back, and that is fouled off. That lead's shortened up a little bit over there now at first. And that pitch outside, count even now at 2-2. Two -two. Pate with a healthy lead over there. And this one's poke foul. Ooh, heads up, coach. <laughs> I think that one got in the dugout. There's, there is uh, there is a way to get a coach to get off his bucket every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Hit a foul ball right in this grill. And they break for second base. Lout's going to have a shot and not able to get a good grip on the ball. You could see it loose in his hand. He kind of had to double clutch. So Pate is able to steal second. Full count at the plate. One away, runner at second base. Oh, and Wolf throws a good fast, or excuse me, curveball, but does not make it next, the to the strike zone. Six, and he issues a walk to Klein Lindsay. His first of the day. Bates comes up. He's over one in the uh, ground out to second. His first time up, too. So Gilmer, runners at first and second. Lout's going to go out and just check on a couple of things with Wolf, make sure they've got everything squared away. Is he? One out here. The Rough Riders have the lead one to nothing. We are in the top of the third. Much faster ball game than the game we had on Tuesday night. <laughs> maybe the field dimensions maybe make that different game. All right, here we go. Everybody's got their signals. We're reset. Runners at first and second, one away. This is Bates at the plate. Need a double play ball right here. Get out of this inning. And they work the runner back at first base, and he's called safe. Wolf with a good move there. Lane had kind of slipped in behind him. That was a called play. Now they're going to crash the corners in case of a bunt play. We've seen a lot of that. Yeah, with only one out, it wouldn't surprise me to try to sacrifice the bunt over and get runners in scoring position here, but they're going to let him swing away. And that pitch outside. Bates swung a good bat Tuesday night. We did actually see him bunt in certain situations, so we still be watching for that here. Jaden Lane in on the grass over at first base. Logan Horton playing even with the bag. He does have a runner at second headed his way. And that's, that's a it. beautiful fastball for strike one. Wolf came right at him that time. That low fastball is a tough pitch to bunt if you're going to bunt. And Bates hasn't shown her bunt uh, look at all yet so far. And the big curveball, swing and a miss. He is down in the count, one, two. Folks, that one was tough now. Wow. Tough curveball from Wolf. Buckled his knees. He still swung the bat, but his knees buckled at the same time. Hmm. And Bates going to call time and kind of regroup there. That was an ugly pitch, not what he was expecting. If it's working, do you throw it again? And he does. And a check swing. They're going to appeal. And nope. He stayed away from that one. No swing there. So 2-2 two -two count. <coughs> no 
Now you got a 2-2. Two -two. Let's worry about uh, this uh, hitter at the plate. And he comes back oh. hard with a fastball low and away and misses. So the count's full with one out and two men on to Bates. Bates would like to have that one back. I think he was trying to get that fastball working on that one. And the fastball inside and throws him. That's another twice the eye strikeout for Easton Wool. Bates never took the bat off his shoulders. That was not the pitch he was expecting. So a big strikeout and a big moment for Wolf. That brings up the cleanup hitter, Ryder Lang. Two outs now with two men on. He's off one flight out to center his last time up as well. Goes outside and misses. Steps off, takes a look at the runner at second, no throw. Bellin had kind of slipped into the bag. And they come home with a fastball for a strike. Got laying off his uh, toes a little bit there by checking him out there at second right before the pitch. Comes inside. This is lifted to center field. Cody Atkinson is camped out and will make the play. The Riders had a little bit of threat, but they're able to pitch their way around it and will head to the bottom of the third. Rough Riders up one to nothing here at the Horseshoe. Bird Forestry began with Mike Bird, East Texas's lush forests, and a dream for the future. At Bird Forestry, that future is now. As it moves into its second generation, Bird Forestry is a diverse enterprise protecting the environment while it works with industries to ensure the growth of Texas businesses and the welfare of its people. The Bird family supports the riders on the course and beyond. There's never been a better time to give yourself a great night's sleep than now with Blake Furniture's mattress clearance sale. For a limited time, choose any of our luxurious Serenity Sleep Complete sets and pay only the price of a mattress. You heard right, buy a Serenity Sleep mattress and get the box spring absolutely free. Combine our already low prices with this offer and you won't find a better deal in East Texas on a quality set of bedding. With Blake Furniture's fast delivery and easy in-store financing, you can't afford to miss another great night's rest with Serenity Sleep bedding. For Matthews Realty, going above and beyond is what's expected. This is agency owner Colin Matthews. Our team of seasoned real estate professionals believe in giving their clients an advantage in any real estate transaction. Matthews Realty has a reputation of highly personalized service. Matter of fact, it's our number one priority. From commercial and residential properties, poultry farms to beach rentals, our team works hard so you don't have to. Call Matthews Realty 598-7800 or see their complete listings at MatthewsRealty.com. All right, we're back to the top of the order. Yeah, we're back here ready to go for uh, the uh, bottom half of uh, the uh, third inning. And uh, coming back out here is Davis, two innings of work. He's thrown uh, 25 pitches, no strikeouts, two base on balls, three hits, and one run charged to him. All right, we're back to the top of the order. The Riders will send Sutton Link, Easton Wolf, and Cody Atkinson to the plate. And Link. Takes a curveball for a strike. First curveball strike we've gotten from Davis. And he goes outside and misses with fastball. Counts one and one. <coughs> Wind's picking up. You can kind of see the flag blowing. The wind is blowing dead away center field here tonight. And he shows bunt, lays down a good bunt, hits it right back to the pitcher, and Davis able to throw him out at first base. Hit that just a little harder than he meant to. It was a good, a good idea, kind of a late drag bunt. Now batting the pitcher, number one, Easton Wolf. But Link hit it harder than he meant, and it went right back to the pitcher. So that's going to bring up Easton Wolf. Easton uh, 0 for 1 grounded out to or flat out to second his first time at the plate today. Kind of talked about it in pregame. Both teams trying to lay down some bunts, play a little small ball here. 
Saw a lot of that Tuesday night. And Wolf, little chin music there, just able to duck away from that breaking ball. Hmm. That one almost caught him on the lip. And comes back inside. Wolf fouls that one off. The count now one and one. So far, everything to Wolf has been inside, high and tight. And Wolf Ooh. hits a hard shot to left, but DJ Moreno able to make the play for the Buckeyes. That's a well hit ball. Up next, the center fielder, number 14, Cody Atkinson. Just got a little underneath that one, didn't he? Yeah, got a little more lift on it than he meant to. He hit it well. Moreno took about a half step and made the catch. So Atkinson comes up with two outs here in the bottom of the third. And he rips the first pitch he sees foul down the third base line. Atkinson, another one of those multi-sport athletes. He is a sophomore here. A defensive standout for the Rough Rider football team. Yeah, I saw him make some awesome plays on the football field this year. And he slaps one down the third base line. Oh. And Bates juggles it and unable to come up with it clean. And Atkinson is on. That was a deceptively slow rolling ball, kind of kind of pulled an outside fastball down the third baseline, and it just kind of trickled up on Bates and unable to come up with it cleanly, and we've got a base runner with two outs. Two out rally, that's the way it goes sometimes, you know, just to got something started. Logan Horton steps in. He hit a hot shot to the shortstop his last time up. And they pick at first base, Atkinson back safe. Not finding anything about the girls' game. I don't know what's going on over there. I don't know heard anything from the guys or anything. I don't know. I'm yeah. trying to find the stream and see if we can figure something out, but I haven't heard anything, so I don't know what's up. And that one skips in. We had a little bit of trouble with the Internet over there Tuesday night, mm -hmm. so they may, have, uh, may not have a lot of signal. We had to switch over to a different carrier to be able to get the game broadcast, so I'm not sure if the guys may be having a little bit of issue with the technology. Atkinson with a good lead. This ball is fouled out of play. So the count even to Horton at one and one with two away and a man on first. They do try Atkinson again at first. He's back safe. Saw a lot of pickoff plays Tuesday night. Atkinson gets another half step. And he runs, and this is hit sharply to third. Bates makes what that play, play and throws him out. Great play over there. Bates able to scoop that one and throw him out. All right, we'll be right back for the top of the fourth here in just a moment. Struggling with mobility, chronic pain, work, or sports injury? At Azalea Orthopedics, our team of highly trained physicians specialize in complete orthopedic care, pain management, sports medicine, physical medicine, and rehabilitation. If you've sustained a bone or joint injury, have mobility or movement problems, struggle with pain, contact Azalea Orthopedics. <coughs> Your hometown sponsors include Bird Forestry, Keeping Things Natural, Pizzeria, A Taste of a Generation, TNR Steaks and More, and Granny B Snow Cones. At Hope Community Medicine, they believe that more than medicine is needed when providing quality care for their patients. With locations throughout East Texas, 
The vision is to give hope to those who seek a better life by caring for their body, mind, and soul, and not about their ability to pay. Through the network of staff and locations, Hope seeks to be primary provider of medical, dental, and behavioral health. Because the difference that Hope makes is the difference between night and day. Hope Community Health. Back here, ready to go into uh, the fourth inning. Wolf pitching very well. He's only thrown uh, 49 pitches, three strikeouts, one base on balls. I got him for uh, two hits through his three innings and uh, no runs so far. Appreciate Farmer State Bank sponsoring the game tonight. Gilmer's going to send Lofton, Jones, and Moreno to the plate. Lofton steps in first. He's the DH for the Buckeyes. And Wolf winds and delivers. This is going to be hit. Hard to center field in the air, but Bellin able to go back and make the play in front of Atkinson, so one away. Ball was hit well, but it got up in the air, and Bellin able to camp out and put that one away. Well, folks, unfortunately, we got an update on the Lady Riders. They are down 14 to nothing in the fourth inning up in Gilmer. So hopefully the Riders can put a few runs together and stay in that one. We will keep you posted. And Wolf comes back with that curveball. That one's going to miss outside. Jones 0 for 1 struck out his first time up. <laughs> and this one's going to be chopped up the middle. Bellin makes the play. Nice, wow, good range from T.J. Bellin. Had to take that on the hop, and I was hopping out there. I was wondering if he's going to be able to get the scoop or not. He caught that ball even with second base behind the pitcher's mound, took about two more steps into second base territory, and threw a strike to first base for the out. And the reason I was worried about that is because he had to step on the bag coming across, yeah. and that kind of gets you up a little bit and didn't want the ball to scoot a little up under him. So a good to, job there by TJ. Trying to get his feet under him so he could make a good throw, and it took a few extra steps. But two away here, and Wolf faces Moreno outside for ball. Moreno left-handed batter. Big curveball and a swing and a miss from Moreno. That evens the count at one and one. Moreno had a single his first time up. Oh, and a check swing strike called. Took a little delay from the umpire about three seconds before he made that call. Did he call? Well, wait a minute. Did he call a strike? It looked like he called a strike on it. And a swing and a miss for strike three. The ball gets in the dirt, and Lout throws him out at first base. So the Riders made that particular at bat look harder than it should have but they're going to carry a one to nothing lead into the bottom of the fourth when we come back here at the horseshoe oh i gotta get up granny Bee snow cone center is your source for great summer treats it begins with quality shaved ice and from there you get everything from the single color snow cone to a really creative summer treat and besides, the counselor likes them. They're also your home for Dippin' Dots. They've been supporting the Rough Riders for a mighty long time. So pull up to the window at Granny B's and let them serve you something special. Your local bank is on the move with improvements to two locations. One on the World Wide Web, what used to be ShelbySavingsBank.com is now SSBTex.com, a more powerful and user-friendly website. And at the original Selma Street location, a new lobby to better serve you. Improvements to the corner of Shelbyville and Selma and at the intersection of your device and the World Wide Web. It's SSB, same bank, new look. Back here, ready to go for the uh, bottom half of the fourth inning, and Davis uh, ready out there. Three innings of work for Davis. He's thrown uh, 36 pitches, no strikeouts, no base on balls. Three hits so far. His team has one error behind him, and he's given up that one run uh, here through his uh, three innings of work. Ryder's going to send Bellin, Lane, and Milford to the plate this inning. 
nursing a one to nothing lead here in the bottom of the fourth. Would like to get a couple of insurance runs. Want to say how much we appreciate all of our sponsors this year. JBI Insurance, if you need to cover that new car you bought, go see Joe Bill at JBI. He can fix you up. Maybe a homeowner's policy. Maybe you need to get that RV or that four-wheeler in good shape before summer. Go see Joe Bill Matoyer at JBI Insurance. I like to say that, Matoyer. Matoyer. This is a cool name right there, Joe Bill Matoyer. He, he's been called Metier, Matoa. <laughs> I, I bet so. A little bit of everything in between. Metier. Mature, <laughs> yeah. yeah. He prefers Matoyer. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right, T.J. Bellin, here we go. And that looked like a change-up high and out of the zone. And another pitch outside misses, so it's 2-0 to Bellin. Need to get a leadoff run on tonight. And Bellin hits a high ball. This is into left center. Outfielders go out. Oh, and Moreno makes a play over the shoulder. Nice play right at the fence. Bellin got... 99% of that, <laughs> but give credit where it's due. Moreno made a running catch right at the fence. Good play by the left fielder, but Bellin got every bit of that baseball. All right, Jaden Lane steps in. One for one had a uh, single. He's the one that scored that run coming in there back in the second inning. And a great play in the field as well. And he takes the ball outside. That used to be one of my favorite things about baseball, learning all the signs, too, every year. You get different coaches, different signs. And, and oh. Lane with a check swing hit towards second base. He's going to try to beat this out and just – not able to get there. The second baseman, Ryder Lane, throws him out at the last second. So the Riders have two outs here. That's going to bring up Case Milford. Yeah, it was funny the other night. Of course, Coach Moore gives the old-fashioned signs, and the Gilmer coach was just yelling numbers, and guys would look at their wristband to know what the play was. Almost like football wristband. Looks like that. Milford takes a fastball for a strike. I'm have to change the battery. <coughs> and Milford's going to foul this one back towards the crowd for strike two. Almost had a fantastic catch by one of the moms. <laughs> she let that go. Come on, Mom, you got to get on that. Milford down in the count now, 0-2. And he's going to pop another one out of play and into the stands. So he's hanging tight there, a couple of foul balls. Count still 0-2 with two outs. Catcher set up well outside. And Milford punches that one away foul. Doing a good job hanging in there. Trying to get him to chase after that outside pitch, aren't they? Catcher slid way outside off the plate. Davis delivered. Milford had to reach across just to get a touch of the bat on it. And he hits this one in the gap and earned that base hit, folks. Milford on with a single. After three straight foul balls, he got one he could handle, and he knew what to do with it. All right. Now batting for the Riders, the catcher, number nine, Colby Lout. So Colby Lout coming up with two outs with Milford at first base. Lout with a base hit last time he came up to bat. And that big triple, RBI triple. Can the senior come through again? Got his his Toby Keith over the loudspeaker. 
So with two outs, we'll keep an eye on Milford. He has got a huge lead over at first base. And that's going to be a strike on the outside corner to Lout. <coughs> and Lout fouls this one back. So he's going to be down in the count 0-2 here. And Lout hits this one hard right at the shortstop, and he's able to make the play and oh, comes across and throws man. out Lout at first base. Brandon Pate with a backhander just able to get Lout at first. The Riders hold on to a one to nothing lead. We'll be back and headed to the fifth inning here at the Horseshoe. That was a great play. Sparky D's Bargain Store. Who are we? We're an online auction store. You'll find us on Facebook only. We're located in Center, Texas. Check us out as we have auctions going on right now. It's Sparky D's Bargain Store, an online auction store that can save you lots of money. Go check out our page, bid on items you like, and save yourself a lot of money. It's Sparky D's Bargain Store, Facebook only, located in Center. At Sparky D's Bargain Store, we'll save you more. All righty, folks, we're back here now as we get ready to go for the fifth inning. And uh, out there back out is a Wolf. Got him for uh, 57 pitches. He's given up the two hits and no runs and uh, no errors behind him here tonight. So we're uh, ready to go here to the uh, fifth inning. And the Gilmer Buckeyes are going to send the 8, 9, and 1 hitter to the plate. Off Dylan the Griffin's going to get things four, started Dylan for him. Griffin. A little Gladys Knight in the pits. Liking that. On the speakers tonight. That is another good thing about coming out to the baseball field nowadays is uh, got to love all the great music played out here at the ball field. Woo, and Wolf comes in, just almost clips the batter, able to step out of the way, kind of I think he's fussing at himself for not letting that hit him. Woo, and the big curveball for strike one. He delivers that curve every time. Kind of do the brush back pitch and then come back with a curveball. Counts now one and one. Goes back with a curveball outside and misses 2-1. The curveball is really working for him tonight. He's done very well with it all night long here. Hopefully it'll keep up for him here as he gets to pitch number 60 on the evening. All right, Wolf asks for a new baseball, and here he goes. Comes inside for a strike. Beautiful pitch there right on the knees. Batter was looking for something out and away. So 2-2. Two -two. Big curveball is going to be hit just foul down the third base sign. We will come back. Mr. Dillon made it all the way down to first base. He will come back and reset. Wolf working quickly from the mound tonight. A lot faster game than we had Tuesday night. And this is going to be hit sharply in the gap between first and second. Goes into right field. Mosley gets it in quickly. But Dylan Griffin with a leadoff single to start things here Up in the top right of the fifth. 10, Aiden, They're going to lift Griffin for a pinch runner. Well, that young man left the bag and was already at the pitcher's mound before they notified the umpire. <laughs> <laughs> I, his coach immediately took off running and held his hand up to the umpire. I, I think he realized what his runner was doing. He said, get my catcher out of there. All right. 
they squared a bunt here, and it rolls foul. So this is going to be Aiden Aiken. He is the nine-hole batter. He bunts the first pitch he sees foul. We told you we'd see a lot of this, so he'll square again. Horton in on the grass. Lane is holding the runner at first. They do get the bunt down. It is fair territory. Lout takes it to first and makes the play. Good job by right Colby. That, that ball never got off the dirt. Yeah, it, it just got out there and just died. That's got to get out from that catcher position quick because you want to watch and see if it will bounce foul, but he didn't even have a chance to do that. It just died, so he just pick it up and get after it. Yeah, Colby barely had time to get his mask off. So this, back to the top of the order, this is going to be Pate with a man at second and one out. One for two at the plate today is Pate. He got a single his last time up. Fastball outside, misses. Wolf just not getting that fastball call with a left-handed batter. He's just a little too far outside with it there. Curveball, and they're going to say that missed. That mm. was a good-looking pitch. That caught part of the plate but the umpire's opinion is the only one that counts, so the count's 2-0. Tried that fastball out there, didn't get it, and thought maybe he could bring that breaker right back in and just stayed just a little off. They are going to pick it second. Bellin had snuck in behind the runner, but not in time. Good move by Wolf. The quick, quick move there, but not in time. It's always a good idea, especially when you have a pinch runner. Pinch runners don't normally play a lot. This is lifted high into center field. Atkinson is on the horse, and he'll run that down. The runner tags and heads to third. He will advance on the play, but Atkinson with a good out there in center field. Yeah, he was shaded way over there toward right center, but he made a good jump on it, and uh, that was high enough uh, height on it. He was able to take care of it, no problem. All right, so two away. Gilmer has a runner at third. That might be the first runner they've gotten to third base, if I believe I'm correct. Mm -hmm. uh, they had uh, Lofton back there at third. Did Lofton go? Okay. So yeah, back in the second inning, yeah. Second runner they've gotten to third. Let's see if the Riders can close the door, and an inside fastball for strike one is a good way to start. This is Klein Lindsay at the plate. Comes back with a fastball fouled away down the third base side. So down in the count now, 0-2. Wolf jumps out ahead quickly on Lindsey. Oh. And a boy, just a <laughs> barely fouled off that curveball. He does find a small piece of it to stay alive. And that curveball in with a swing and a miss and another twice the ice strikeout for Easton Wolf. Shuts down the threat at third base and the Riders take a one to nothing lead to the bottom of the fifth. Farmer State Bank. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender, and so much more. Bird Forestry began with Mike Bird, East Texas's lush forests, and a dream for the future. At Bird Forestry, that future is now. As it moves into its second generation, Bird Forestry is a diverse enterprise protecting the environment while it works with industries to ensure the growth of Texas businesses and the welfare of its people. The Bird family supports the riders on the course and beyond. Sparky D's Bargain Store. Who are we? We're an online auction store. You'll find us on Facebook only. We're located in Center, Texas. Check us out as we have auctions going on right now. It's Sparky D's Bargain Store, an online auction store that can save you lots of money. Go check out our page, bid on items you like, and save yourself a lot of money. It's Sparky D's Bargain Store, Facebook only, located in Center. At Sparky D's Bargain Store, we'll save you more.
party, folks, back here. Davis back out there on the hill. I've got him for 49 pitches. No strikeouts, no base on balls. He's given up the four hits and the one run here to the Riders so far through his four innings of work. And ready to go here to the bottom of the fifth. Gage Vadreen going to start things off for the Riders. They'll send Vadreen, Link, and Wolf to the plate this inning. We appreciate so much Farmer State Bank sponsoring this series with the Gilmer Buckeyes. Farmers with a branch near you, always happy to help support athletics here in Shelby County. Vadreen 0 for 1, little grounder back to the pitcher back into the second inning, his first time up. And that one over the head of Vadreen, had he not ducked, he would have caught that in the ear hole. So he will step away. And here we go again. And he hits this one a mile high down the left field line, but foul. That one hits the top of the pine trees out there. Now, as I was coming in here, I noticed that there's there's some trails in there. You can go do some walking all through here and bring the dogs. Is that, yeah, is that okay? I don't know. I've never done that Beautiful part of uh, center has a, a park just – and this one's going to be a check swing back to the pitcher. Vadreen is going to be thrown out at first base. Boy, that was a tough break. He had a hard swing on the ball, but it just kind of trickled back to the pitcher. Now batting the left fielder, number four, Sutton Link. Yeah, in between the high school fields here and the little league fields is a center part of their park system. There's a walking, jogging trail. There's a big uh, Lake with a, a jungle gym for kids and all kinds of picnic area down there. It's beautiful down here. Great oh. place to come. Bring the dogs down and take a little bring, walk during the bring afternoon. Bring the dogs here. down, get a little exercise. That pitch outside to Link. I know we're, we're talking baseball. I know we, we've already talked about doing some uh, coverage of the Dixie Little League tournament coming back here to center this year so uh, we may be in on that coming up here and link is going to foul one toward oh. first base and the first baseman made a play for it but Lindsay not able to get there so the count now one and one to link yeah the center uh, has been hosting the dixie baseball world series now for years a lot of the state playoffs are here a couple of the world series finals are here Link hits a hard shot to left, stay and fair, it is going to get down, and that is a oh. foul ball, and oh, they're going to call God. him back. Boy, what a tough break. That was a long, hard hit to the corner, and it didn't go foul more than a foot or two, and long one hopped the fence. Just a long strike. Link had already rounded first base before that ball landed. So Davis is going to ask for a different ball. That one's got bad juju. <laughs> want to get rid of that thing. Get something else in there. So Link got a one-two count with one away here in the bottom of the fifth. The Riders with a one-to-nothing lead. And he pokes this one right back to the pitcher and throws him out at first base. So two pitch. Two pitches hit right back to the pitcher for two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. And Wolf comes up. Pitcher, one, Wolf. Wolf's 0 for 2, a couple fly outs. And I tell you, Davis is pitching very, very well here for the Gilmer Buckeyes. I mean, he's given up a few hits in that one run in there. But the, uh, but I tell you, that uh, they, they played really well here tonight. He has helped his case here in this inning. Had two comebackers where he was able to make the plays at first. So Wolf's going to step in with two outs. And that fastball misses inside. And he hits this hard. That's that is fair. a fair ball, That's folks, fair. down the left field line. That's going to get all the way to the fence. Wolf digs for second, and he's in with a stand-up double. Little two-out hitting by Easton Wolf. He cranks the air guitar, tries to get the dugout fired up. 
We'll see if we can get a pinch no runner for Wolf. 14, Cody Atkinson. Wolf, of course, the starting pitcher tonight, helping his own cause. He's going to get a pinch runner in. This is number 15, Keith and Horton comes in to run for Wolf. Now Cody comes up here, had that big double back into the first, and he reached on an error his two times at the plate here, and here's another opportunity for him to really do something big here at the plate. Coach Moore goes through some long <laughs> signals. So the Riders, two out, a man on second, and Atkinson hits a towering shot in the center field. And Justin Jones able to camp out and make that play. Boy, tough spot. Riders not able to get that runner around, but they hold on to a 1 0 lead. We'll head to the top of the six when we come back. Farmer State Bank. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender, and so much more. At Aurora Concepts, our team of doctors and advanced practice providers are highly trained and qualified in family medicine. We strive to provide our patients guidance towards the healthiest lifestyle possible, no matter their age. We offer a full spectrum of family medicine, including scheduled appointments, telehealth services you can do from home, and walk-in visits with no appointment. We accept all major insurances, including Medicaid and Medicare, and we also have the most competitive self-pay rates in the area. For highly trained expert care in East Texas, choose Aurora Concepts. Let us take care of you. For Matthews Realty, going above and beyond is what's expected. This is agency owner Colin Matthews. Our team of seasoned real estate professionals believe in giving their clients an advantage in any real estate transaction. Matthews Realty has a reputation of highly personalized service. Matter of fact, it's our number one priority. From commercial and residential properties, poultry farms to beach rentals, our team works hard so you don't have to. Call Matthews Realty 598-7800 or see their complete listings at MatthewsRealty.com. All righty, folks, we are back here as we get ready to go to the sixth inning. It's a one to nothing ball game. Center Rough Riders with the lead coming up here for the uh, Buckeyes will be Bates, Lang, and Alofton facing uh, Wolf here. And Wolf, through his five innings of work, he's thrown a 72 pitches, five strikeouts, one base on balls, three hits, no runs, no errors for his team behind him. And uh, he'll come up here ready to go against Bates. Bates 0 for 2 at the plate today. He had a uh, ground out and a strikeout his two times up, and now we'll come up and ready to go here against Wolf. As Mr. Locke is back here with us. Ready to go as Bates steps in here. Whoa! Big curveball got away from Wolf. Bates had to duck that one. I think that ball slipped out of his hand there. Just a bit outside. We saw a bunch of that Tuesday in the <laughs> rain. Boy, it was balls were flying all over the field. Comes back with a nice. good fastball with a swing and a miss from Bates. All right, count one and one. Beautiful night for a ball game. It is. It didn't got too cool out here, but I see everybody with some jackets. It's nice out tonight. Fastball, same play, same result. It's another swing and a miss, and Bates is down one to two. Wolf working quickly tonight. And swing and a miss. That is a twice the ice strikeout. And Wolf has iced another one. At six tonight for Mr. Wolf on the bump here this evening. Here comes Lang to the plate. He's over two. A couple fly outs out there to Atkinson in center field, making him, you know, have to do a little bit of work out there instead of standing out there by himself. That's right. Gets lonely out in the, <laughs> in the outfield. And the Wolf. big curveball for strike one. Boy, Wolf has got the snap on that curveball tonight. He definitely does that. <laughs> and fastball, same spot for strike two. Only one, one, two, three inning. That was back in the fifth here. And uh, seeing if he can uh, repeat that here in the, uh, um, that was in the fourth. See if he can repeat that here in the sixth. Goes way outside with a breaking ball there. Got plenty of pitches here. Counts one and two with one away. 
And that one's foul back. And the curve got a swing and a miss for another twice the eye strikeout for Easton Wolf. Boy, the curveball was just ugly there. Mm. Wolf has definitely got it working Next tonight, to folks. Number two, Harrison Lofton. So two away brings Lofton to the plate. He is the DH. Oh, for one, been hit by a pitch. He made it to third there back in the second, but that's uh, as far as we can let him get. I see make uh, Wolf make some quick work here. He's only got 81 pitches and come out here in the top of seventh and finish this thing off. That's a nice. That's He's just now warming up, I think. I, I'll tell you, that's the <laughs> hardest fastball we've seen from him tonight. That he had a little extra it. pop. He is bringing it now. Woo, oh, my god! The gosh, big curve for strike two. Wolf is feeling it, folks. Wow. Way ahead in the count. And he went right at him with a fastball. That's going to be fouled away. And the big curveball. That's going to miss low and away. Count is even now at 2-2. Two -two. No, nope, I'm sorry. I, got, I missed I a pitch. One, two. I got one, one two. two, yeah. And this one foul back. Staying alive. Working really well with the fastball curveball combination. Don't know how well he could throw his change up tonight, but that would be a little bit of something they haven't seen. Mm. And that one, Lout has to step way out and dig that one out of the dirt. No problem. He had a pitch to waste there, but it is full count now. No, 2-2. Two, two. Two. Oh, Batter. Yeah, you got to step out for a second there, Batter. You can <laughs> now you well, can come back in. That, he stepped yeah, out real he, quick and he gave him time, and then he was right back in and you know, halfway <laughs> through the pitch sequence. Yeah. I'm not sure he asked for time. <laughs> the umpire, he stepped completely out of the box. The umpire jerked his mask. That was kind of an odd sequence there. Ooh. Ooh, and Easton thought he had strike three. The fastball is going to be called low there. He would already taken a step toward the dugout. Payoff pitch. And the big curveball misses, and Gilmer's going to draw a walk. Mm, good, good at bat there by uh, Lofton. As, uh, next man, center fielder, good job. One, Justin Jones. Wolf made some quality pitches there, but Lofton able to foul him away until he found something that, uh, that was out of the zone. He draws ball four. So that's going to bring Justin Jones, the center fielder, to the plate. Two outs, man on first, and a good fastball. And they're going to say that is low. Jones 0 for 2 at the plate, struck out, and a ground out his two times up. Not much of a lead at first for Lofton. He does break, though, and a swing and a miss at the plate. The ball is off track to second, and Lofton's going to steal a bag. Second stolen base of the day here by... The Buckeyes. Oh, they are calling interference at the plate. Oh, They really? called interference on the batter. That means that he is out. So the stolen base is erased. And Easton is out of the inning. The Riders will come back. Wow, what a change of events all of a sudden. The Riders will come back to the bottom of the sixth, nursing a one-run lead here at the Horseshoe. Will Blackshirt knows a thing or two about baseball and softball. He's an old Rough Rider baseball player himself, so he understands that numbers are important. How about this for numbers? A 16-pound bag of ice for $1.75 or a 20-pound bag dumped right into your cooler. 25 cents gets you a gallon of filtered water. 75 cents, five gallons. How about that? Twice the ice.
Hey, Jack Allen. Hey, yes, sir. Tell me about TNR Station War. What do you look forward to? Oh, I look forward to the seafood buffet. On Fridays? On Fridays. Everything about it is just exquisite. So if it's a Friday night game, you need to eat at TNR Station War. Alrighty, folks, back here, ready to go. Bottom of the six, one to nothing. Riders hanging on here, going against Davis, who's pitched very well for the Buckeyes. He's got 58 pitches, no strikeouts, no base on balls, giving up the five hits, the one run, and only one error for the Gilmer Buckeyes here today. None for the Riders in this ball game, which is good, I do believe, Mr. Locke. That's right. Yep, we uh, seen a lot of good baseball, a lot of good pitching from both sides tonight. It's a one-run game. Appreciate our sponsors, The Forge on the downtown center square. If you want to work out and get in shape for uh, beach season, you need to head up to The Forge. They've got plenty of machines for every workout routine. Get in shape for that summertime. Appreciate The Forge sponsoring center baseball. Horton's 0 for 2 as he steps in here. First hitter of the bottom of the six. Ball one. That last inning ended on another interference call. This time it benefited the Rough Riders. The Rough Riders had an interference call go against them early in the game. So I guess you could say we're even. <laughs> and Horton hits this hard into left, uh, right center. Center fielder on the horse, and it gets down. Yeah. Jones not able to put a glove here on it. Horton He's digging in. for third. They're going to hold him at third. A stand-up triple for Logan Horton to lead off the bottom of the six. That's what the Riders needed right there to get something just cranked up and ready to go here. And uh, put it in the insurance run going to the top of the seventh here is what they really need to do. Center fielder Jones made a good play. He had to come a long way for that ball. Gilmer's going to call timeout. Coach comes out to settle him down. Jones made a great play, folks. If you're at home listening to us in Gilmer, he made a tremendous effort. He had to run a long way, just maybe a foot from catching that baseball. It got past him, one hop the fence, and Horton rolls into third base with a stand-up triple to lead off the bottom of the sixth. And as we were talking about in pregame here, how big and wide this field is here, you know, and, I mean, that was just a nicely hit ball because it didn't get too high up and it just had enough time to travel and uh, playing a little towards that left center side there. He had a long way, like I said, a long way to go. But it got down. That's good for the riders here. All right. So Gilmer has the infield on the grass. Bellin comes to the plate with a man at third base and no outs. He's going to take the first pitch high and tight for a ball. So anything hard hit here, the infield is in on the grass trying to cut that run at home. And Bellin pops this one foul right back at us. <laughs> one on one. Coach Moore going through a long sequence of signs here. We'll see if maybe he – I would be shocked if he bunts Bellin here with the infield playing in. Surely he's going to swing away. And that pitch low and away misses. Yeah, I don't know if I would uh, use the bunt right here with everybody uh, playing in. You know, no outs, man yeah. over a third. I'd see if you can just get a little bloop or something, see if you can find something to yeah, find its way through. Slash, slash it something and knock it through here. And he pokes at that one and pokes it foul. So Bellin's got an even count now, 2-2, two, two, no outs. Oh. And a curveball. Bellin goes down on strikes. That was a good pitch from Davis. Hard to believe that's his first strikeout of the night, as well as he's pitched here this evening. All right, Jaden Lane comes to the plate. Now, this will be a little bit different. Lane is a left-hander. We have a man standing at third with one out. Suicide squeeze. 
One for two at the plate today. Lane did score that run back in the second. He had a single, got on to start off in that second there. So uh, grounded out at second, his second time up. And they're going to step and try to pick Ooh, off. Oh, my goodness. That was Ooh. close. They tried to pick Horton off, and he decided Ooh, to step close. back instead of dive back, and he almost got tagged out, folks. Oh, boy. That, that was, was too <laughs> close for comfort. Yes, it was. Wow. The the coach in the dugout, I think, giving the umpire a little bit of business. The umpire was kind of waving and talking. He's going to call time, and here comes the coach. They're going to appeal to the home plate umpire. Yep, Gilmer's coach. I thought he was thought he was talking to the umpire. He's coming out on the field this time. That was, I mean, that was a really, really close play over there. And I mean, I, I couldn't tell if the umpire was looking this way. Maybe just something. If he did, he just if he did, he just barely got in there. All right, so they're gonna he, leave him there. Looks like he holds. He upholds the call, of course. He's not going to overturn his own call, mm. whether the coach comes out or not. <laughs> Some of the players even wanted to talk to the umpire. All right, so let's reset. There's one out. Logan Horton standing on third. Jaden Lane at the plate. He Has just not run in. seen a pitch yet. Horton comes home. It's a suicide and foul ball. That's a foul ball. It is a foul ball. That's a foul ball. It was a late call. It was a suicide squeeze. Mm -hmm. We called it, and they tried to execute. The ball bounced up and was caught in foul territory. The home plate umpire made the call. It's a good call by the blue. Gilmer coach was already out of the dugout running to protest, and the home plate umpire stopped him. Said it was a clearly a foul ball, so we'll reset. I don't know if we want to try that again. No, now now they're <laughs> they're set up for it, so you only get one one good shot at a suicide squeeze. Yeah. So the count now one and one to Lane. And takes that pitch outside, two one. All right, time to pull out the cape, folks. We need a little bit of a hero for Jaden Lane. Got an opportunity here with Horton standing 90 feet away. Yeah, very important insurance run standing down there with the top of the seventh coming up. And he's going to foul this one back. Two and two. So the count now even. Two, two to Lane. Got it, Jaden. <coughs> Once again, just a little slap over the second baseman's head. Really, all you need is you can just get a little poke out there. So Davis taking a lot of time in between pitches here. Lane calls for time again and steps away. Hits this into center field. That's going to get down, and Horton scores from third, an RBI single for Jaden Lane. That's the insurance run that the, the Riders really needed right there. Now batting the second baseman, number three, Case Milford. Well hit ball from Jaden Lane, dead into center field, and it one hops into Justin Jones's glove, and Horton trots home from third. So it's two to nothing. Rough Riders lead here in the bottom of the sixth. And Case Milford steps in with one away and Lane at first. And he's going to swing through a fastball there. Lane with a pretty good lead. He's a pretty savvy little base runner over there. We see him move quite a bit. Ooh, helped him out with that one. Yeah, Milford reached for a pitch well outside the strike zone. I just right. have a feeling that Mr. Lott wants to get to the plate one more time here before. Yeah, get everybody reset here. Lane with a good lead over at first base. They set up outside. I think that might have been a uh, 
not a pitch out. They were set up looking at Lane at first base when the catcher caught the ball. A little pitch out, see if they could get him going to second there. Got another another half step. And this is going to be poked into left field. Probably get and down. that's going to drop. And a base hit from Milford. Milford just kind of pokes that into left field for a base hit. The Riders have two men on with one away here in the bottom of the sixth. Yeah, left fielder out there, uh, Moreno just playing all the way back, almost to the fence out there. Looking for a long fly, and good job there by Milford just poking it. I'm not sure what – they've called Coach Moore to the plate. I'm not sure what far. They're discussing something about the the line here with the umpire at home. I'm not sure what Coach Moore is asking. Mm -hmm. I'm not real sure what he was asking about, folks. Something about being in, in the whole box in there, being out of the box, stepping out of the box, maybe having a foot out of the box. I'm not quite sure. I, I don't know. So they're going to call Milford out at first because he was out of the he box was out of the when box. he wanted the ball. You know okay. I mean? yeah. That's what they call. Yeah, so that's what it is over there. So okay. Lane is going to be sent back to first base. Milford is called out. That's that's the second out. They mm -hmm. said he was out of the box when he made contact. That's what Coach Moore was upset about. Says I, he didn't think he was all the way out. As long as he had one foot in the box, I do believe. Uh, well, I agree with Coach Moore now that I know what he was arguing about. Right. He'd have to be all the way up on the edge of the grass to be completely out of the box, and there is no way. Mm -hmm. That is a terrible, terrible call in that situation. Have we seen? All right, well. A couple of those uh, come on blue calls out here tonight. So Lout is at the plate. Got a 0-1 count to Lout, Lane at first base. We've got two outs now after that uh, rather odd call. Haven't some of the outs we've seen tonight been odd? Yeah. Interferences. And there, was, and all kinds of there, was, stuff. there was some of that Tuesday night that kind of had you scratching your head for, for both teams. It's like, what in the world? Got it. One and one. All right, Colby Lau with another chance here. Had a triple earlier in the game to push the first run across for the Rough Riders. They do pick lane Ooh. at first again, Got almost threw that away. <coughs> if you throw one away here, it goes a long way to the fence. Yeah, you, you, you pretty much give it up a base if you throw it away over there. You might give up two. And this is That'll poked through down. Kobe Lout with another base hit tonight. And he's on with a single into left. Kobe has caught fire here tonight, folks. That's his second base hit. Now batting for the Riders, the designated hitter number 13, Gage Vadreen. All right, Vadreen with a chance to do some damage. Two men on. They're going to lift Lout for a pinch runner. That's number seven. Jace Radney comes in to pinch run for Lout. Two out rally going or for uh, going on right now here for the Riders. See if the Dream can keep this train running. Over two at the plate today. A couple runners back to the uh, pitcher. See if he can get it out of the infield here. They do turn and pick at second. We saw a lot of that. Lane, pretty good base runner. He was back with no problem there. Two outs, 2 0 lead. I don't know how aggressive you might want to get, but I guess, you know, you're still trying to push one more across here. And just in case, you can get every run you can get. And that pitch outside misses to Vadreen. A lot of time. Davis takes a lot of time in between pitches. So this game has kind of slowed to a crawl all of a sudden with base runners. He's only at 77 pitches, so he should have a lot of gas left in the tank. He's pitched very well. 
This oh. is hit hard by Vadreen into left field, and it gets over the left fielder's head. Vadreen bounces one off the wall. That's going to score Lane. And here comes Jace, and the Riders score two. Gage Vadreen with an RBI double bounces it off the wall in left field. Up next, the left fielder number four, Sutton Lee. Nice job by the Riders bringing a couple more here to uh, really get it going here in the bottom of the sixth inning. I'm really surprised, really surprised that Gilmer is going to leave this young man in. He's given up two long hits here. Bedreen one hop the wall with that one into left center. Scores two more RBIs. The Rough Riders jump out to a four to nothing lead here in the bottom of the sixth. 0 oh, for 3 at the plate today for Link. Let's see if he can get a little bit of this action going on here in the uh, The Dream with a huge lead. They do try to pick him. He has to dive back in. He, he was steadily walking <laughs> off the bag. Davis finally turned around and saw it. Lane did get a little bit behind him there, but the Dream getting right back in. And Link's going to pop this up on the infield. The second baseman calls for it and makes the play. But not before the Riders add three more here in the bottom of the sixth. We'll be right back for the seventh inning here at the Horseshoe. Farmer State Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender, and so much more. Your local bank is on the move with improvements to two locations. One on the World Wide Web, what used to be ShelbySavingsBank.com is now SSBTex.com, a more powerful and user-friendly website. And at the original Selma Street location, a new lobby to better serve you. Improvements to the corner of Shelbyville and Selma and at the intersection of your device and the World Wide Web. It's SSB, same bank, new look. Alrighty, folks, we're back here ready to go to the top of the seventh inning. Three outs away from a win here for the Riders. They put up a few insurance runs to make it four to nothing there into the sixth. And a Wolf back out there onto the bump, and he's pitched very well here tonight. He's thrown out 92 pitches, seven strikeouts, two base on balls, three hits, no runs, no errors for his team behind him. And rare, I don't want to jinx anything, but, you know, no more errors. No errors will win you some ball games. That's what's That's happening right. here tonight. That's right. The Riders have looked really clean tonight out Playing good defense, being smart with the baseball. Gilmer has tried to do a little small ball. They've tried the bunning and the stealing and all of the stuff that worked for them Tuesday night. Hasn't worked here tonight. Riders playing pretty solid. But we'll see if they can uh, finish this thing out right here. So we've got the 7, 8, 9 hitter coming to the plate. This is who you want to face if you're the Rough Riders here in the top of the seventh. Yeah, Moreno, he's uh, one for two at the plate today. And two quick strikeouts to start there into the top of the sixth and then a little bit there for the Riders. But uh, let's see if he can uh, continue that right here to start the seventh. Big curveball to start him off with a strike from Wolf. That curveball has been deadly tonight and has looked very well here. Oh, and that one curves a little bit too much and it's going to hit Moreno on the back of the leg. The catcher, number four, Dylan Griffin. So the Buckeyes have their leadoff hitter on here. This is going to bring up Griffin, the eight hole. One for two. He had a single his last time up. He hit a single there in the fifth and an unassisted little runner to the first baseman lane back into the second his two times at the plate. And this one's going to skip in. Appreciate Farmer State Bank sponsoring our game tonight. Farmer's going to be open tomorrow for your Saturday banking needs tomorrow morning at all of their branches around the area. 24-7 ATM coverage for East Texas as well, and that's a strike to even the count at one and one. Good 
And that one misses low, 2-1. I know we got a uh, little post-game show coming up, brought to us by Schaffner's Watcheteria, and I, I may be there tomorrow doing some uh, some dog blankets and stuff. Man. I love going to <laughs> Schaffner's. They got some awesome people that work there, and they take care of you. Schaffner's with all new dryers about a month ago. They installed brand new state-of-the-art dryers, so handle the big stuff. If you've got comforters and blankets and all those things coming out of the winter months, good chance to get them washed and dried there at Schaffner's and a call strike at the plate. Full count. He thought it was a ball, did uh, Griffin? Batter, he's ready to take off. Batter was about to throw his bat toward the dugout, got called back. And this one poked in the hole between first and second. And Gilmer's got two men on with no outs. That was just a, a, a good piece of hitting there. The batter didn't even make a full swing, just kind of poked the bat out there and got a piece of it. Looks like we've got a pinch hitter coming in. And a pinch runner. So this will be uh, Aaron Bell. Aaron Bell going to bat if you're watching at home. Back in Gilmer, Aaron Bell's going to get an at bat here as a pinch hitter in the seventh inning with two men on and no outs. And right now that was pitch number 100 for Wolf out there. Aiken before was uh, 0 for 1 with a sacrifice bunt, so bringing in Bell here for the pinch hit. Try to get something here for the Buckeyes. And the fastball misses high. Jaden Lane playing the odds here for a bunt over at first base. He is in on the grass, ready to crash. They do pick at second, and a close play almost tagged out at second base. Woo. Bellin had him mm. dead to rights. That was a bang-bang play at second. They almost picked the runner off. That would have been a huge here at this point of the game. And that pitch misses in the dirt. 2-0 count on the batter. Got to get that first out. That's the hardest one here. Let's get that first out here. And that one low. So 3-0 to the batter. Don't want to load them up now. No choice but to put one right down the pipe here. And he does. 3-1 count. All right, so the pinch hitter. No outs. Two men on. And this is lofted into center field. Atkinson over his head. That's going to go all the way to the wall. Gilmer will send the runners home. One will score. The second one ran through a stop sign. There's a tag. He's out. And he is. They're calling him safe at the plate. There was no signal. but I didn't see a sign at all, but it sure did look like they tagged him up there. So the runner, I was watching him come around second, and the runner ran through the stop sign from the coach. He, he was sure taking the stop. <laughs> he kept going, slides in, and they're going to call him safe at the plate. Lout made a good tag. The plate was covered in dirt. It was hard for us to see where the runner was versus the tag. The umpire does call him safe, so they score two runs here in the top of the seventh. It is now four to two with no outs, a pinch hit RBI double from the Buckeyes. I don't leave a runner over at second, I do believe. Well, folks, we've not <laughs> seen Aaron Bell. Aaron Bell, number nine, comes up in a clutch situation, bounces one off the center field fence for a two RBI double here in the top of the seventh. And if you saw on the video, third base coach was adamant halfway down, three-fourths yeah. way down the line. Stop, <laughs> stop, 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 stop. He just kept on coming. He wasn't going to be denied, he says. Well, going that's going to the house. That's going <laughs> to lift Wolf. Wolf, folks, 
look, I, I can't tell you how well Easton Wolf has pitched. He pitched six shutout innings, nothing but zeros, six zeros in a row. He gives up a double here in the seventh. So we got T.J. Bellin is warming up on the mound. So as Bellin comes in here, yeah, like I said, I mean, getting over 100 pitches there, he got to 105, seven strikeouts, two base on balls, and now the three, now the uh, six hits and the two runs. But, uh, you know, Easton Wolf pitched a phenomenal game for his team here today. And we'll see if uh, TJ can come in here and close this thing down and get this uh, Rough Rider win here. You're at Carthage next week? Is that what the last final series is next week for the Rough Riders? That's right. We are at the end of district here, so the Rough Riders have a – Home and away with Carthage. We'll go to Carthage. Let me double check that. I believe we go to Carthage uh, on Friday night. We play Carthage here Tuesday night. So Tuesday night here at our house. Friday night we finish the season in Carthage. There we go. And uh, also, you know, and be, be on the lookout, folks, because we will have the uh, center Rough Rider uh, softball squad and their playoff teams uh, probably be on the NFHS Network, but we'll be covering those games coming up. Top of the order. All right. Well, here we go. There are two men on. Or, excuse me. I'm sorry. We have a man at second. Mm -hmm. It's two to four with and no points. outs. Tell me a little bit about Bellin on, on the bump here. Is he, uh, is this, this is a good spot for him to come in? Bellin's come in in relief quite a few times this year. He pitches pretty solid for a couple of innings. We're going to see if he can get the riders out of a jam here and finish this ball game. And he hits the first batter he sees. That's not an altogether bad thing. And, and I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean that we have a, a runner at second with no outs. We're back to the top of the order. So basically he just put the lead the lead off runner on. Now you've got a force at three bases. So – uh, that's not, not altogether a bad thing for the Rough Riders. Lindsey 0 for 2 with a base on balls as he steps up here, no outs and a couple on. And, and Bellin hits Lindsey on the elbow with the first pitch he sees. Now that is not good. Now the Riders have the bases loaded and no outs. Bellin going to have to settle in here, just throw it across the plate, make them beat you with the bat. So two straight hit batsmen. Gilmer suddenly come alive here in the top of the seventh. Riders need a couple of things to break their way. 0 for 3 at the plate here for Bates, and we'll face uh, Bellin for the first time. And, uh, yeah, those uh, insurance runs they got there in the sixth, helpful here, but got to get this first out. And that pitch outside. Bellin going to have to challenge batters here. Can't pitch around, nowhere to put anybody. And a good fastball for a strike there to make the count one and one. All right, remember, folks, bases loaded. There are no outs here in the top of the seventh. Yeah, let's just worry about the hitters at the plate here. Goes back Listen outside, 2-1. And if uh, something happens out in the field, let it happen. But let's uh, worry about the, other, the hitters here at the plate. Bellin back outs. in the windup. That's he's a little more comfortable there. Uh oh, three one. A lot of noise coming from that Gilmer dugout. They are feeling it. Sure could use a double play ball right here. And a good hard strike down the middle. So a full count here. We'd much rather have the strikeout, but we'll take a double play ball here, even if it does bring in one run. Bates is yet to swing the bat in this entire at bat. And there it is, a twice the ice strikeout for TJ Bellin. Could not happen at a better point for the Rough Riders. Boy, that's talking about a big out right there. The second baseman, number 13, Ryder Lane. That was the Fifth pitch of the – sixth pitch of the at-bat in the first time he swung the bat. And another strike to start off this batter. Bellin might have found his groove here. One away, bases loaded. 0 for 3 with Lang and Bellin pitching quick. 
And this one's fouled out of play, 0-2. Oh, like to finish this off with the bases juiced. Momentum shifting over to the Rough Riders a little bit here. And this one fouled back as well. That's the first breaking ball I've seen from Belton. That looked pretty good here too. Bellin wastes no time, gets on the rubber, and here he delivers. And this is going to be chopped. Third baseman takes it. They go to second, and it's oh, thrown no. away at second base. One run, two runs in, tie ball game. The errors we were talking about, and that one gets away from being thrown in, and now they're going to be on second and third. Wow. We had the out in the middle of the field. Wolf flipped it over to second. It gets away from Milford at second. Not sure. It hit his glove. I'm not sure what happened, but it skipped away from Milford into center field. And that allows Gilmer to tie this ball game four to four on the error. That would have been the third out, and we'd have been sitting on the bench. Actually, we'd have been lining up to shake hands. That was the ball game. That was it. So instead of being finished with this, with the win, we are tied up four to four. There are runners at second and third, two outs. All right, Bellin starts this batter off with a strike. Lofton. This is Lofton, middle of the order. And that one in the dirt, one and one. Wow, what a change of event with one error. Mm -hmm. And this one fouled long down the right field line. Two out, I only have one. Got two on the board. Maybe it is one. I'm trying to I, think. I'm I, I think it is only one out. I think it's one. I think you're right. I think the scoreboard has it at two. I remember one. I think you're right. I think when the uh, when they made the play in the middle, I think the scoreboard recorded that as an out, but it was not. Yes. So I think there's still just one out here. Just one. And that pitch high, 2-2 two -two count. And this hit sharply to Milford at second. He knocks it down and comes home. And they're going to have a play at the plate. He is exactly. out at the plate. Good oh. job, Colby Lout. Wow. Little indecision out there, but they make the play. Wow. The, so the ball was thrown home. Milford chose to come home on the play, which was fine, but the ball was not thrown well, and it got away from Lout. Lout had to pick it up and dive over to make that tag. Now the, one, Justin Jones. the rider's making this look awfully hard. <laughs> All right, now there's two outs. We still have two men on, but there are runners at the corners. And Jones, the ninth bidder to the plate. The in riders, the riders hold here. They've still got an at-bat in the bottom of this inning. So we've got an equipment problem. Colby Loud has to pull off his chest protector. I think he had a strap come undone. All right, here we go. All right, two away, runners at the corner. Justin Jones, the center fielder, is the batter for the Buckeyes. And he's over three at the plate today. And that pitch high misses.
And this one foul back, count even, one all. Well, two outs here. TJ needs to forget about that runner at first and just go to the batter. Runner goes. This is hit hard into center field. Cody Atkinson is in position. And the Riders are finally out of a very long inning, folks. It is a tie ball game, 4-4. Four to four. We're going to pick up the bats here in the bottom of the seventh. Riders have got another swing. At Aurora Concepts, our team of doctors and advanced practice providers are highly trained and qualified in family medicine. We strive to provide our patients guidance towards the healthiest lifestyle possible, no matter their age. We offer a full spectrum of family medicine, including scheduled appointments, telehealth services you can do from home, and walk-in visits with no appointment. We accept all major insurances, including Medicaid and Medicare, and we also have the most competitive self-pay rates in the area. For highly trained expert care in East Texas, choose Aurora Concepts. Let us take care of you. Granny B Snow Cone Center is your source for great summer treats. It begins with quality shaved ice. From there, you get everything from the single colored snow cone to a really creative summer treat. And besides, the counselor likes it. They're also your home for Dippin' Dots. They've been supporting the Rough Riders for a mighty long time. So pull up to the window at Granny B's and they'll serve you something special. Hey, Jack Allen. Hey, yes, sir. Tell me about TNR Station War. What do you look forward to? Oh, I look forward to the seafood buffet. On Fridays? On Fridays. Everything about it is just exquisite. So if it's a Friday night game, you need to eat at TNR Station War. Alrighty, we're back here as uh, we're ready to go. Davis now throwing uh, 78 pitches on uh, the ball game so far, 79 pitches. He's got one strikeout, no base on balls, and nine hits, and uh, the four runs against him. His team's got one error behind him. But uh, the Riders need a, need a run here. Well, they've got the bats coming up that they want. This is two, three, four hole coming up. Easton Wolf going to lead things off, followed by Atkinson and Horton. This is who you wanted to play in the bottom of the seventh. One for three at the plate today. Had a double his last time up. That's ball one to him. Wolf has pitched a whale of a game. Had six shutout innings. Got lifted in the seventh. And that pitch well outside, 2-0. That's three games in a row where Wolf pitched lights out for at least six innings. And the Riders having a tough time closing things in the seventh. Tie Ooh. ball game here. The Riders have three outs to get it done. 3-0 count to Wolf. Get that leadoff man on and see if we can put something together. And that's ball four on four pitches. The Riders have a shot here in the bottom of the seventh. They've got Wolf on to start things with no outs when they need it the most. Next, center fielder number 14, Cody Atkinson. Atkinson comes to the plate. Catcher's going to go out and talk with his pitcher. This young man's pitched a great ball game. Now the coach comes out. That's the first base on balls given up by Davis this game. Not sure if they're going to make a change here. Davis has pitched into the seventh inning. Yeah, only 84, 85 pitches, so he's still got a little bit left to go here. Appreciate all our sponsors tonight. Of course, Farmers Bank, the game sponsor. The Forge on the center square. Go get your workout done. Mooney's Emporium. Got all your gift needs as well as things for – the okay. barbecue pit and some soups and other spices and food. And you can probably get you a Watlington Shires Pierce production shirt there, too, if you ask. <laughs> if you really want one. All right, Atkinson steps in. He's got Wolf at first base and no outs. And 
and he hits this sharply to short. They're going to flip to second. They get Wolf at second for sure. Atkinson is safe at first. So one out. Now batting the third baseman, number eight, Logan Horton. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, Logan Horton steps in. One away. Wolf still at first base here in the bottom of the seventh in a tie ball game. They're going to pick at Wolf at first, or excuse me, Atkinson at first, and he's back easy. Playing the outfield really deep here. They're keeping everything in front. Horton connects down the line in left, but just foul. Well, we uh, didn't get the uh, game called out there in uh, Kilmer, but... Uh Looks like the late the lady riders might have took a little one on the chin there as they get ready for the playoffs. So. Yeah, had some technical difficulties with the other crew tonight. Lady riders shake that off and get ready. Play in the postseason. This one gets away from the catcher. Atkinson goes into second on the pass ball, so a break for the Rough Riders. They now have a man in scoring position with one out. That ball was low and outside. It skipped off the shin guard of the catcher. And Atkinson takes advantage. Haven't seen too much of that by either pitch here tonight. We've seen a few of them that are outside, but, I mean, both catchers have done excellent behind the dish this evening for their pitchers. And this is a ballpark that punishes catchers. If they don't <laughs> block balls, it's a long night. Atkinson in scoring position. Horton 1-1 one, one count. They do pick it second, and it gets away from the second baseman. There we go. Atkinson goes to third. Oh, man. All so right. Now. The momentum has shifted here. A lot of chatter out of the Rough Rider dugout. Atkinson standing on third. He has stolen second and third on two pass balls, one past the catcher and one past second base. Go low. All right. So now it's Gilmer's turn to cut the run. Everybody's in on the grass. The winning run, 90 feet away, one out. Horton at the dish, and this one almost takes his head off. <laughs> wow, he had to duck out of that or it would have hit him in the ear hole. That's not chin music. That's chiming the bell. Whew. All right, umpire's going to take a little time, brush the plate, let Horton uh, – Regroup here. He had that big triple there back into that sixth inning and uh, scored that run in there. So see if he can connect here and bring in the winning run. And this one fouled straight back. Even a sacrifice right here with even one out. Sacrifice fly would work. Counts 2-2 two -two to Horton. Only one out. And they're going to step and pick Atkinson. Oh, the ball away. gets away, and Atkinson wins the game on an error. <laughs> Rough Riders win 5-4. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. All I can say is wow. Well, folks, I hate to say this. Tuesday night, the Rough Riders lost on an error in the bottom of the seventh. And the tables have turned. The Buckeyes lose tonight on an error in the bottom of the seventh. Wow. Crazy, 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 man. I tell you, what a great ball game because really one to nothing there, and then the next thing you know, the Riders explode. They get those four runs or those three runs there. They really needed them into that sixth inning because what happened in the seventh. And, uh, yeah, just a crazy turn of events. But what a win by the Riders here tonight. Well, folks, we'll take a quick break, and we'll be back to kind of clean things up and talk about some Rough Riders and get our player of the game. You know how when you go on a trip, you want your car to be as clean as it can be, inside and out. That's because you're getting ready to take a journey. Well, that's what we're doing here with the pregame show, getting you ready for the Rough Rider baseball. That's why Will Blackshear and all his staff at B3 Car Wash invite you to come by and get the car clean and invite you to enjoy the pregame show.
Hey, Jack Allen. Hey, yes, sir. Tell me about TNR Station War. What do you look forward to? Oh, I look forward to the seafood buffet. On Fridays? On Fridays. Everything about it is just exquisite. So if it's a Friday night game, you need to eat at TNR Station War. Bird Forestry began with Mike Bird, East Texas's lush forests, and a dream for the future. At Bird Forestry, that future is now. As it moves into its second generation, Bird Forestry is a diverse enterprise protecting the environment while it works with industries to ensure the growth of Texas businesses and the welfare of its people. The Bird family supports the riders on the course and beyond. You know what's nice about living in a small town like Center? Long-standing tradition, like Schaffner's Washateria. Owner Will Blackshear is proud of the fact that the Washateria has been right there since his grandfather opened it two generations ago. But you know what's great about Schaffner's Washateria? It's modern. It's kept up with the times. Whatever your needs, large or small, Schaffner's is ready. Owner Will Blackshear says, enjoy the post-game show. Alrighty, folks, we're back here. It's a big win by the Center Rough Riders. They win it 5-4 to four here this afternoon. And uh, this is our uh, Schaffner's Washateria postgame show as we are underway here. And Mr. Locke's going down to have a chat and uh, see if we can get our players of the game. We were talking about whether it be uh, Easton Wolf or Kobe Atkinson here as our players of the game. But, you know, what a great job it was here. And, I mean, what I mean, both these teams pitching very, very well. Gilmer had a great pitcher out there on the bump. So did uh, the uh, center Rough Riders. Uh, Davis going to pick up the loss here. He went 92 pitches, one strikeout, one base on balls. He gave up the nine hits and uh, the uh, four runs, or the five runs actually, uh, because of the uh, couple of errors there, they're going to be charged to him there as well. So uh, he gave up uh, those five runs in there. But nice pitch game there by Davis. Uh, and really no errors. I mean, there was one error by Gilmer earlier in the game back in the second or the third. They really didn't even uh, cause a, a run to come in. But uh, they did have that one. And then the riders are going very well. We talked about no errors can help you win ball games. And the next thing you know, we caused an error. We should have been out of that inning there into the uh, top of the seventh. But it caused them to bring in a couple more runs to tie it up to four and four. So uh, then coming in here and then get a couple of uh, errors uh, for the uh, Gilmer Buckeyes to allow the runner to get around and uh, come in to score. Uh, so a nice job there by uh, Kobe Atkinson to come in here and get uh, the win there on the throwaway there on the air. And the Riders are going to finish above the Gilmer Buckeyes here in the final standings of uh, this ball game. So it was uh, five runs on uh, nine hits. Sorry, five runs on uh, ten hits. Yeah, 10 hits. Uh, the Riders left uh, six runners out there on the base pads. They had the one error on uh, the evening. It was four runs with six hits, seven left, seven left and uh, two errors for the Gilmer Buckeyes here this afternoon. Both these teams playing a great, great baseball game here today. So uh, we have a, a player of the game, and we're going to talk about that coming up here as well. But let's get to some of these wonderful sponsors here to help bring us to ball games. So here we go. Fall that. For lunch today, I would like a salad. Father, for lunch, I'd like one of those American oh, no, cheeseburgers. Ice I'm a vegetarian. Ice cream is cheeseburger. That's I what I need. Ice cream. cream. Oh, when everyone in your family thinks they're royalty, take them someplace where they can all get something good. Dairy Queen. Sparky D's Bargain Store. Who are we? We're an online auction store. You'll find us on Facebook only. We're located in Center, Texas. Check us out as we have auctions going on right now. It's Sparky D's Bargain Store, an online auction store that can save you lots of money. Go check out our page, bid on items you like, and save yourself a lot of money. It's Sparky D's Bargain Store, Facebook only, located in Center. At Sparky D's Bargain Store, we'll save you more. Struggling with mobility, chronic pain, work, or sports injury? At Azalea Orthopedics, our team of highly trained physicians specialize in complete orthopedic care, pain management, sports medicine, physical medicine, and rehabilitation. If you've sustained a bone or joint injury, have mobility or movement problems, struggle with pain, contact Azalea Orthopedics. We're conveniently located across East Texas, serving 18 counties. When visiting your doctor, urgent care, or hospital, you have a choice. Demand Azalea. At Azalea Orthopedics, your health is our priority. All right, folks, welcome back. We've got our two co-players of the game tonight. We've got Easton Wolf and Colby Lout joining us. Easton with a big night on the mound. Easton, we're going to ask you first, six shutout innings. How would you feel out there tonight? Felt pretty good. We uh, 
We were impressed with the curveball. How did you feel about your pitches? Curveball looked like it was snapping pretty good for you. Yeah, uh, it was it was a little rough early, but I got it down in later innings. Well, I know it makes a difference when your defense is playing well behind you. Y'all played pretty clean ball, and I'm looking out there at six zeros. How confident were you with your defense? Always confident. They're gonna play their hardest behind me, and they're gonna play they're gonna play hard every game. Well, you gave the Riders a good chance to win tonight. You did a little bit with the bat, too, with that triple. <clears throat> Tell us how you felt at the plate. Uh, I mean, I felt real confident. I got another barrel, but just didn't get down. Pretty bad first at bat, but I, I, did. I got better as well, the game went on. Well, this is the third game that we've seen where you've gone six innings of shutout baseball. So congratulations. Looked really good tonight, and you had a lot of help out there. We're going to talk to your teammate in just a second, but congratulations on being the co-player of the game tonight. Yes, sir. Thank you. All All right, so Colby Lout joins us now. Colby, you're one of the few seniors on this team. You had a big night at the dish tonight. Tell us how it felt with the bat in your hand. Uh, felt pretty confident, and really and truly, that's not, not usual. Yeah, but... Well, you started off with a, a triple in a in a huge situation for the Rough Riders. Kind of walk us through what you saw in that at bat. Uh, I went up there and worked on my swing a lot this week. We came up here at nine one night and worked on it, and uh, the whole team. And he gave me my pitch and just connected with it. Well, you made it count, cleared the bases, slid in for the triple, and then later in the game you come up in another crucial spot and hit a clutch double. How, do you remember that play? Oh, uh, yes, sir. He had – I hadn't swung in that at bat yet, and I had two strikes on me and threw one outside, and it probably wasn't a strike, but I got on it and caught a barrel. Well, good game for you tonight, going two for three in clutch situations with some RBIs that mattered in the end. Riders pulling out a big win, five to four. Now, there's a little bit of irony in this. Tuesday night, you guys were tied 9-9 nine to nine and lost on an error in the bottom of the seventh. How did it feel to get a little payback tonight with an error to win here at the Horseshoe? Uh, it felt great. I mean, that's always the games you want to win, and that's the way you want to win them. That's a lot. That tells a lot about how we prepared this week and the, the committed, committed, how committed everyone is on the team. So you're one of the few seniors on the team got a lot of young guys out there. You've got uh, Easton Wolf pitching as a, as a freshman. Tell us what you saw tonight out of Easton. Uh, he's been great. It's not just tonight. He's been great all year. And he's, I mean, surprised. I think he's surprised the whole district with the way he's played, not only pitched and also hit this year. Well, he had a lot of help behind the dish. As, as everybody knows, pass balls here at the Horseshoe are a bad thing, and you did a great job blocking it up for him tonight. So congratulations on being the co-player of the game. If we judge by dirty uniforms, you win. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Congratulations. We're going to get Coach Moore in here for just a second. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, Coach Moore, thank you so much for joining us. Big win here tonight at home. I know uh, Tuesday night it was just the opposite. You had it tied going into the bottom of the seventh and things didn't go your way on an error. What was it like to uh, get a little payback tonight? Well, I, I want to back it up. The, the, the TJ play at the end of the, of the last game wasn't an error. That's a, that's a ball that's, that's way up in the air. TJ jumped it to try to get it. That's not a routine play, so we didn't score that an error in the book. Good. Um, that was a tough play to make. Um, man, we're, we've been right there. All season long, right there, right there, right there. Um, we've lost a lot of games by less than three runs. Um, and, and we talked a lot this week about about family and communication and coming together and, and being on the same page. And, and um, it, 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 was, it was kind of an emotional night for us. Yeah. And I think that emotion kind of fueled a lot of our competitiveness. Well, the two guys that we talked to just now, uh, they're, they're kind of the bookends. So yeah. so talk first about this young freshman pitcher you got. Six shutout innings. He did six shutout innings against Henderson last week. Tell us what your thoughts are about Easton tonight. Kid's special, ain't he? I mean, he's, he's something else. I, I, he's 
one of the hardest working kids I've ever coached. Um, the guy, I think every body, there's 200 something bones in your body and I think every one of his are competitive. Um, he, he's, there's no moment too big for that kid. And I say kid, he's a young man. Um, he, he gets mad at me every time I go to pull him out of, <laughs> off the mound. He can be at 109 pitches in the bottom of the seventh inning, and he, he, he gets mad at me when I come pull him. Um, that's just the kind of guy he is. I mean, you see him out on the, on the field right now um, through a, 103 pitches, I think, and he's out there working on the mound. He'll go rake third, rake first. He'll set the field up. He'll take the field down. He'll pull bags. I mean, there's nothing the kid won't do. And he doesn't want to do any of it for himself. No. He wants to do it all for his team. Well, and, and a bright future for the Rough Riders. Now, catching and receiving those six shutout innings tonight was one of your few seniors, Colby Lout. Tell yes, us what sir. Colby means to you. More than I can ever say. Um, that guy, as a sophomore, he'd, he'd never caught a day in his life. Um, and we had a situation come up where I needed a catcher. And... I never even really thought about anybody else. I, I, I knew the work ethic Colby had. I knew what kind of person he was. Um, I knew he'd do anything for anybody. And so I asked him to do a job, and he's worked his butt off for three years um, trying to be the best version of himself at that job. He's a leader on the team. Um, I mean, he communicates everything on the field, and I think tonight – was one of the two best games I've ever seen him catch. Um, he did a phenomenal job back there. Well, he kept everything in front, and, and as we talked about with Colby, if, you know, our field here, if you have pass balls, you pay for them. It's tough. And uh, he kept everything out front tonight, and the uniform proves it. Absolutely. With, with the dirt he had. Tell us about his hitting tonight. That's what really shines with he, the triple and the double. He made one adjustment in his swing today in the cages, um, and we just kind of had a feeling. Uh, <clears throat> and the guy came through in a big spot early in the game. Um, I think he was, what, three for three? Yeah. Two for three, three for three. Um, and every hit that he had was in a big moment. Um, and, and that's just what his senior leadership is. I mean, he's, he, you can – anybody who's watched our games knows he struggled at the plate. Um, but he kept fighting and kept trying and kept wanting to make adjustments and kept hitting and kept hitting. Um, and I, I told him – I don't know, five, six, seven games ago, you're hitting the rest of the year. Um, and it all finally came together in a night where it, it needed to come together. Well, he came up in big places, and he, he delivered. And I know you needed that from your seniors. Uh, so looking forward to next week. Got two games left with Carthage. Yes, so sir. we'll, we'll uh, finish out against them. Tell us how the, uh, the season winds up. So they got two guys that are, that are two of the better pitchers in our district. Um, but I've kind of been talking to these guys over the last couple of weeks that, you know, especially after the Spring Hill game um, at their place where we played them really, really tight for six innings. If we can go and put seven innings together, like the six innings that we played against Spring Hill, um, then who says we can't go take one or two away from Carthage? Um, and, and I know these guys would love to go to go find a way to take one away from those guys a little bit north down the road. That's right. It just it just matters a little more. Yes, sir. It'd be it'd be a real real sweet thing. Well, we appreciate your time tonight. Go enjoy this victory with your team. Yes, sir. And we will see you next week. Hey, at we Carthage. appreciate you guys. All right, great. Thank you, Coach Moore. All right. Well, that is the post game show for here at. The horseshoe, the Rough Riders pull one out late tonight in the seventh inning with a five to four victory. Appreciate Mr. Larry helping us out here. I had a blast. I love getting a good chance to come out and call the, the hometown team. I don't get to do that very often. Yeah, and got a, got we, we ended up splitting with Gilmer. Lost a, a tight one, nine to 10 on Tuesday, but come back and win tonight, five to four. So congratulations, Rough Riders. Great effort all the way around tremendous effort off the mound uh, from Easton Wolf and he had Colby Lout doing it with the bat so thanks to all our sponsors thanks everybody that tuned in we will catch up with you next week when the riders finish out this district season against the Carthage Bulldogs all right, folks have a good night we're out of here bye-bye 
You know what's nice about living in a small town like Center? Long-standing tradition, like Schaffner's Washateria. Owner Will Blackshire is proud of the fact that the Washateria has been right there since his grandfather opened it two generations ago. But you know what's great about Schaffner's Washateria? It's modern. It's kept up with the times. Whatever your needs, large or small, Schaffner's is ready. On behalf of Will Blackshire and Schaffner's Washateria, we say thank you for listening to the Post Game Show.